Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk here on Dork Tales. I hope you're all doing well today. Uh, we are back after an extended absence because I caught a plague when I was visiting my family in the States, and I brought it back, and I even shared it with some of the Dork Tales cast. Um, uh, as per that, Amy will not be joining us tonight because I, I gave the gift that keeps on giving to her. Uh, so, Amy, hope you're feeling better. Uh, we will see you next week. Uh, but tonight, we are going to be hopping back in and making our way to Cragmaw Castle. I'm your Dungeon Master Kelly. I use he and him as my pronouns, and uh, folks, I'm excited to be back. It has been way too long since I have seen your digital faces, or you've seen my face. That seems a little arrogant, a little conceited, but I'll go with it. Uh, it's good to be back, though. Welcome to 2024. Uh, we have a lot in store for you, but before we get into that, why don't we introduce who's here tonight, starting with Christine. Hello. Um, I feel like Amy knew what she was getting into. She knew you were sick when she came over, but Doctor Who was more important. It was. <clears throat> Which there it was really fun um but hello i'm christine i use she her pronouns and tonight i play lady alessandra uh ba, 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 salise martin barroquel um who is our asmr paladin and Thanks. i'm not yet sick i am heavily fighting it though i feel like fight though fight though yes. um all right speaking of fighters actually hold on caitlin i'm gonna shrink you back down to halfling size because we're not in a talking episode again. Uh, it's Caitlin. Hello. I'm pretty feisty. You're pretty uh, feisty. Pretty feisty. Um, I'm Caitlin. I usually hear pronouns. And tonight I'll be playing Anthea Briarfoot, the halfling artificer alchemist of the group. And I suppose dragon harvester. <laughs> dragon harvester. She's gotten so off the rails since what I originally imagined, but it's it's fantastic. Perfect. But still um, maintaining her core. So it's all good. Well, speaking of core strength, let's go down to Krista. <laughs> oh, I hope you mean my character, not me. I'm working on it, though. Uh, hi, guys. I'm Krista. I use she, they, or her, them pronouns. Um, and I am also a little bit sick, uh, but mine is all sinusy and fun stuff. So I have a bit of a kind of off and on headache all day and very nauseous and stuff. So I decided a wig and a whole bunch of really tight necked costuming probably wasn't the move. Uh, so I am uncostumed today, but I tried to make the makeup at least fit a little bit of the character that I play, which is Carmilla Alizar in our Dampier fighter. When you said you were sick and you said it was a sinus thing, I, I was like, well, at least it fits the accent that you'd be a little stuffy. And then you said it immediately in the chat afterwards. And I'm like, ah. Yes. <laughs> This is why we're I friends. sent a voice note that was like, yes, it actually kind of helps the voice. <laughs> I do not always blah, blah, blah. Sometimes I go, achoo. <laughs> Sometimes I, <laughs> I blah, blah, blah. Uh, <clears throat> All right. And last but not least, over in the corner, we've got the master of the donkey show, Chris. Please never call me <laughs> again. <laughs> I was like, I saw I saw the pre-roll. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna hold it together. I'm not gonna like hold, talk a whole bunch about it. But fuck. Uh, hi, my name is Chris. I'm playing Sindri, our half elven monk. I use here they pronouns. Sindri uses the uh, he or him pronouns. Uh, welcome back after Christmas. It's great to be back. Uh, uh, and then something else, <laughs> something very funny, Chris. Uh, during our intermission episode, I said something uh, that I had never. Um, I'd never been gotcha by you on Twitter. And the next day I opened Twitter and immediately you got me. Immediately. The timing was as good as it could be. I was just like, I can't even be, I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm, I'm mad, but I'm not angry. I'm just <laughs> Listen, you know what you signed up for. <laughs> Apparently a lot. There's a disclaimer in my first Twitter post. So if you find it, it's the disclaimer is there. So. There's a reason that that Hi. site starts with an X now. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Um, so, uh, folks, uh, Amy, hope you're going to be feeling better. Uh, before we go in, though, it is the first game of 2024. Uh, and I, wow, 2024, that's so weird. We're all, we're nine years past when Marty McFly came to the future. And we've managed to, you know, put our fashion sense back in order, which is nice. Our clothes can be right side out again. That's great. Um, you know what else is great, though? We have a sponsor. And it's Bookworm Games, of course. Uh, and not only that, but Bookworm Games has increased the amount of discount you get by using code DORKTALES. Uh, not just 10%, you get 15% off of any purchase you make using code DORKTALES at Bookworm Games. 
and you can go there right now you can buy a familiar you can buy more than oh man dozens upon dozens and dozens of dice including liquid core they've got resin they've got uh standard issue acrylic they've got just some amazing dice we um we are very fortunate to have them as a sponsor. They're fantastic people, and they are doing some great projects this year that I can't tell you about yet, but I'm very excited to be involved with. Uh, go check out Bookworm Games. They're a fantastic sponsor. Bookwormgames.com. Uh, use code DORKTALES to save 15%, and if you spend 100 Canadian, which honestly isn't that much in US dollars right now, uh, your shipping's free. You can't get a better deal than that, and you'd be supporting the community and uh, getting yourself some cool dice while making our uh, sponsors very happy with us. So consider going there right now and uh, picking up some dice for yourself. Thanks to Bookworm Games for sponsoring this stream. Hey! Bookworm Games is in the chat right now. And uh, Bookworm, I know you're super excited about this, but we have two World of Darkness and Chronicles of Darkness games coming this week. Uh, folks, on Wednesday this week, we have the Session Zero for our brand new Chronicle. Uh, Vampire the Masquerade, The Dark Ages, Transylvania Chronicles. The Legendary Campaign, well, Legendary Chronicle, uh, is coming to Dork Tales, and we are having our Session Zero, where you get to see the likes of Robin, Chris, uh, other Chris, um, Jen, and Cal, uh, talk about their characters, plan for the eventual downfall of the Canite race, and, uh, you know, just, just generally hearken in Gehenna, as you do. Uh, and then on Thursday, we have the delayed first episode of Changeling the Lost, The Lot of Liars, where uh, it is going to be a fantastic game ran by guest storyteller Simon K of the Onyx Path and Tabletop Almanac. It is going to be fantastic. I'm very excited to be playing in this one, and I hope you join me. Besides that, I have some more announcements that I'll do toward the end of the stream that you may not have heard because we've mostly just talked about them on Patreon. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to join us on Patreon, starting tomorrow, actually, we are returning to Strixhaven, kind of, sort of, with a special episode featuring the cast of Call of the Netherdeep showing up. So I have to go plot that immediately after this game and finish that up where they hunt down the false or maybe the real Dorlin Wildrock. So consider joining the Patreon five ducks, five, five ducks a month, five ducks a month, um, which are exchangeable for, for US currency, uh, buys me food and pays my rent and also uh, helps you get access to a ton of additional content. I'll tell you more about that later. Um, does anybody have any questions about last game? Because it's only been uh, three weeks, four weeks since we did game. And I wasn't there. <laughs> oh, you were. No, you were there in the last one. Oh, in the last one, the one before that one. You were still, you were, you had just got back enough. from vacations though. So you were still pretty out of it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I will remind you, so last, the last episodes before the holiday season, you all traveled out to the ruins of Thunder Tree a settlement that had been destroyed by some type of mystical volcano. And in its wake, the ash from its caldera had raised the townies that had not been able to escape as ash zombies, creating a pocket of necrotic influence. Uh, you went there, managed to find a druid who could guide you, or at least give you directions, to Cragmaw Castle, where your good friend Gundren Rockseeker is likely being held. You also fought a green dragon. Lyric died, but then didn't. Uh, Carmilla was poisoned by a, an anti-undead herb that the druid had been planting around town. And you all managed to succeed and plunder the place. You even managed to avoid some giant spiders and spook off some dragon cultists and steal their stuff. After there, you made your way down south, bumped into a banshee that was surprisingly social and easy to get along with, and then made your way out to Old, Old Owl Well, where you encountered a bunch of zombies. However, these zombies were not rampaging, but merely doing archaeological excavation under the guidance of a necromatic, necromantic, I should say, uh, a necromantic grad student? Well, you made friends, or at least associates with this person, uh, after slaying all 12 of his zombies, and uh, Carmilla traded him some of her undead blood for his grad school project. And he was very happy about that. 
With that, you decided that you were going to check back in in Phandalin and then proceed north into the woods to find Kragma Keep slash Castle, whatever we're deciding to call it this game. Uh, so that is what happened previously. Does anyone have any questions before we begin? <clears throat> All right. I don't think it's amazing so. how many people go to fantasy <laughs> grad school. <laughs> fantasy grad school is great, man. Like it's it's when you're just not ready for the fantasy real world. It's it's great. That's why I went to grad school. With that, let's begin. Fandelver and below the shattered obelisk. You rest at Old Owl Well, taking some time to recuperate, regenerate your hit points, and prepare for the days ahead. It's one full day of hard riding you estimate, to get back to Phandalin. Following the roads and keeping your horses at a steady gallop, you should be able to clear the last 50 miles in about six or seven hours. You rise in the morning, say your goodbyes to the necromancer. And from there, head off. As you make your way south, well, southwest as it were, your horses are in good spirits. At the back of the group, though, Lyric seems somewhat distracted and off in her own world, occasionally just letting her horse do the riding for her as she pens something in a small notebook. There's little notes that you're going to hear as she's humming to herself and possibly composing something. It is a fairly relaxing trip. At least it is for the first few hours. Can I get a perception roll off of everyone? First roll in the new year. First roll of the new year. Don't All fuck right. it up. It's not that bad. Yeah. This is going to be the first roll of this chonker oh. that Jen made me. Whoa! Oh, that's nice. That's beautiful. So, Jen, I hope you waited it. <laughs> <laughs> I got 16. 16? Yeah. 18. Hey, not 18? bad. Uh, I rolled a 19. Lyric so, got a 5. 21. 21. And Carmilla. <laughs> you don't have a bonus to perception anyway, so it's a 16. 16. All right. You are all going to succeed here. As you wind around, as you wind around this merchant trail, old and beaten and pockmarked, pits everywhere that threaten to uh, to snag your horse's hooves as they as they continue to gallop forward. You're going to notice that your horse's ears begin prickling, and their motions become somewhat stilted. Alarmed. A moment later, you hear why. In the distance, a howl. It's close. Not miles close. Wolf howls are incredibly hard to pinpoint due to the natural, the natural acoustics that they rely on. But the hair on the back of your neck rises up. And you can tell that you are very, very close indeed. And Thea, can you make me a wisdom save, please? Okay. Uh, oh, wait, do I get a bonus to the wisdom save? I do not. It's going to be a five. And Thea, as your horse pulls you forward, you do not just feel the hairs on your neck rise. You feel a knot begin in your stomach. And you can taste the metallic flavor of adrenaline rise into your mouth. And suddenly, we are not riding down the trail toward Phandalin. We are back a decade before maybe more. You are traipsing through the woods. It has been hours 
since you departed Neverwinter. The donkey and cart that you and your friends had borrowed to transport you are hours behind you on the edge of the woods. What are you doing? Oh, wait, sorry. Am I on my own? No, you're not. Oh, no, I'm with everyone. You are with everyone. You can see the other halfling children nearby you. Ahead of you, a fairly rotund, stout halfling boy named Lenumo Tallbelly. His leering over a uh, or peering over a rise in the woods Rovia soft fingers is behind you looking nervously over her shoulder how long did you say it was going to be again because I wanted to go back and do some more studying Rovia gives you a look not far at all, okay? okay? It's around here somewhere. There's gonna be treasure inside. Yeah, there better be good, though. Of course it'll be good. It's a castle. Did you That's bring true. it? You have it on you still, right? The acid? Well, yeah. Of course. Good. I got a few of them. Uh, I got this one. It's purple. And I got this one. It's green. And I got, well, I don't have a third hand to grab it, but I've got a blue one, too. What's the difference? Fat fingers oh, reach over of. your shoulder, and the tall oh. belly boy grabs one of them out of your hand at random. Oh. Well, see, so the purple one's made with butterfly pea flowers and acid and to hold it all together and see the green one is more just the acid it's kind of more concentrated though so this one you got to be careful with why what's wrong with it i said it's more concentrated jeez open your ears well what does that mean it means that if you get it on you it's going to burn you faster Anyway, I'm holding on to this one because I don't trust any of you with it. Fair. I don't trust you not to have messed this up. I don't know why we brought this one. She's just a kid. He's maybe two years older than you. Maybe. That's a lot older (laughs) when they're that young. (laughs) He's How old are you at this point? Eight? Nine? Yeah. He's maybe ten or eleven. There's a rustle from the bush behind you. Oh. And Zalra, the last member of your party. Zalra Tosvale takes a step out and looks around. There's a large stick in her hands that she's dragged oh. out from the wood to use as a walking stick. Well, I mean, I might be young. Don't do that again. That's, that's scary. I think give me a heart attack. Why? Why are you afraid? <laughs> it's just me. I was just taking a wee. Well, yeah, I know. I know that now. But it could have been anything. We're in the woods. In any case, though, I might be young. But that's why you're all older and gonna, you know, you can fight things. You got the stick. There ain't nothing to fight out here. <sighs> just a couple. I don't know. And as you say, that you was far know. away, right? Can you make me a survival roll? <laughs> I can sure try. We're going to assume that you have the same wisdom that you had 10 years ago. <laughs> All right. Uh, 16. A 16. The howl sounds again. And in the woods here, you can tell that you are very very close indeed more howls join in over what over do you do if you encounter Uh sorry too much howl (laughs) they're not actually close right 
Sounded pretty close. And as you say that, there is a whistle through the air, and an arrow will slam into the ground. Long, knotted, gnarly arrow made of a twig. It lands at the ground near your feet, and you can hear the sound of paws, like hoofbeats, raging through the undergrowth some hundred yards down the rise. I don't think we should be here. Tall belly surges forward and looks over the rise and goes, Wargs! There's wargs down there with gobble! And the last thing that you hear him say is goblins. At least you think that's what he says. There's another whistle and the punch of bone as this larger halfling opens his mouth and the tip of an arrow punches his front teeth out, (laughs) plunging through the back of his jaw. He drops to the ground, holding his mouth, tears stinging the sides of his eyes. Let's go back, let's go back, we gotta, we gotta go, we gotta go, please. Zalra and Frovia turn and run as quickly as they can. Wait for me, please help. <laughs> you hear the sound of muttered cries around the length of that arrow shaft. Can you do me a favor and make me an athletics roll, please? I can sure try. Good job. Mm. For me, Mm -hmm. 14. 14, all right, you are going to be able to run through the undergrowth. Oh shit, Um, as you did, you ran through the undergrowth, your tiny legs somehow propelling you forward. You jump over branches, over fallen logs. You slide down embankments, splashing through an old, barely full crick. However, as you reach the side of this crick, it's a a five foot drop, an immense amount to any halfling, particularly a young one. Zarya runs and catches a root right at the edge of the creek. She tumbles forward. And in slow motion, you walk, well, you watch her fall into the creek, the side of her head hitting the ground with a little as a barely visible rock embedded in the creek bed strikes the side of her temple. Blood surges out into the water like an old, well, like a spilled elixir. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. She's going to take like two seconds to like Shake her. Make me a medicine check with disadvantage. Okie dokie. Um. Okay. <laughs> Not proficient in any of these things. Uh, 13. Mm-hmm. 13? All right. Um, she is still alive, but badly injured. Blood is pouring out of this head wound, oh as head wounds are wont to do. And over you, you are going to hear the sound the sound of Frovia tumbling as well. She hits the creek and you can hear the sound of a snap as her elbow dislocates. Oh, oh, she get pulls. your good arm. Let's, let's help her. Let's, you gotta oh get my her. God. Is she, is she alive? Is she? Yeah, barely. We can get her to medicine though, or the medicine man. Okay, okay. And she reaches down and tries to wrap an arm under, under Zalaria's arm and begins to pull her up and as that happens there is an explosion from the undergrowth and a scarred old warg a wolf in well a wolf if drawn by someone with a cruel imagination leers over the edge of the crick and snarls down at you one of its eyes is sealed shut by molten flesh its jaw is riddled with scars and parts where its lip has been chewed off by other competitors what do you do? Throw the vial of acid that I still had in my hand. Okay. Make me an attack furiously. roll, please. Yeah. 
Let's go. Um, just flat, or uh, you can make an attack roll using your dexterity or strength. Okay. Um, and I will just subtract one from your total because you probably weren't as strong. Uh, no, but I'm gonna use dex. That's. Um, do I have retroactive determination? Sure. Yeah. Nice. Um. Um, I can math. Plus four. Thirteen. Thirteen? Uh, thirteen from where you are. That's with the determination? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm rolling the best. Rolling Maybe the I should best. switch to this dice. This is better. Mm. Thirteen is enough to hit. Whoa, nice! Your vial flings forward, colliding with the side of the warg's face. Even in your child, your small childish grip, you're able to aim this well. It splashes in its face and it lets out a howl of pain as it snarls and tries to to, to wipe the acid off with its well, with its clumsy paws. In uh, the distance, you hear more howling. We don't have much time for that. We gotta go. We gotta go. Can I get you to make me a strength save? Ooh. Uh, pardon me, you can make me an athletics check to carry her, actually. Okay, okay, that would be better. <laughs> okay, so your friend has an 11. Okay. Well, this dice was better. Uh, s- sorry, I- athletics? Oh, uh, it's the athletics. exact same. <laughs> okay. That's okay, 17. 17? Okay, against all odds. <laughs> Rovia tries to pull with her one good arm. You keep your eyes on her and you can see that her elbow is bent backward at a disturbing angle that flops slightly as you move. I'm just not going to look at it. You grab and you pull. And against against all odds, you're able to drag the other halfling girl. Thankfully, Zalria was not very much heavier than you. She was about your age and a little scrawny for it. And between the two of you, you are able to basically fireman carry her and rush down. Now I have to ask, are you running down the creek bed or are you trying to go up over and through the woods? Would you like to make a survival roll? Sure. I'm a halfling. Oh, perfect. (laughs) That's a little bit better. That's a 14. Okay. 14? <laughs> you rush down the creek bed. And as you do, the water gets deeper. Not incredibly deep, but enough that it begins to pick up a bit of momentum. It begins to splash around your heels. You run. And run. And eventually you will escape. A farmer on the edge of the woods, an old human man, will see you there as he's grazing some of his cows. He'll help you back to Neverwinter. But ever since, that sound has set you ill at ease. And I have to ask, as you are here and your stomach is churning the sound of the howls, who was it that had to tell Mrs. Tallbelly? We probably all went together. Or me and um, the other person that whose arm was kind of wrecked. Mm, Frovia. Mm. Frovia. You never saw the other halfling children socially again. Your parents weren't interested in that for you. And when you saw them in the markets or at festivals, that sense of panic and alarm always was not far behind. Nor were the ashamed glances that you gave each other. Perhaps you could have done something more. 
Perhaps you never should have been looking for Kragma Castle in the first place. Back in the present, there are howls up ahead. You all got a really good roll on your perception. You'll notice that the horses are getting a bit skittish, but also you hear the sound of running water. There is a river up ahead. A small one. What do you all do? Uh, Anthea's going to be clinging to the horse and just, I'm big. I'm brave. I'm big. I'm brave. Uh, Lady Alessandra, um, what should we do? Um, well, uh, they're, if they're in the way, they will either run off, or I suppose we fight. If we can avoid it, we probably should, right? How much would she know about this sort of thing? What sort of thing? Like, activities of likely wolves. Like, if we go around but not too far away, are they likely to just catch our scent and follow us? You can make me a nature roll or a survival roll. Either would be acceptable for me. I get the exact same outcome of 15. I mean, wolves don't tend to mess with people. If these are just wolves up ahead, um, wolves are fairly benign overall, unless they're starving or rabid. Um, wargs or dire wolves are a bit more predatory and more willing to take on an individual or maybe a pair, like a, you know, a, a couple in the woods having a picnic, a family of three, something like that. Sure, a dire wolf might take that on, but five armored horsed people it's unlikely mm -hmm. that again there are multiple howls and from the sound of it you don't think they're dire wolves they sound like wolf wolves they sound more normal dire wolves have a, a certain dark reverberation and depth to them that this is lacking alright so she's going to kind of present that to everybody of like well there's a lot of us we're on big animals we're well armored hmm And they do sound like wolves. They're more likely to try and avoid us. So we can probably find a way around. Or yes. should we just continue our way through if they'll likely avoid us? Well, we could see where they are. And they get closer. If it's out in the open, they'll probably just run away to avoid us. But... Depends on what's in the area because I don't, I don't know the train very well, so I don't know if going off the road is going to add days to travel. We could also sell their pelts later. This is true. But if we can avoid doing that, well, lead on. Let's let's try and just see if we can spook them. Uh, Carmilla is gonna sort of pull her horse up close to Anthea's and sort of reach a hand over and like pat her hands on the reins um I, I rolled myself a perception check to see if I could hear you whispering <laughs> and I rolled a 17 so I was like yeah, I think I could I'll, I'll pitch in um yeah she'll just like a cold hand on yours and just sort of oh. give you a bit of a squeeze thank you Alessandra's um, going to pull her pull the axe off of her back Sindri will oh sorry uh, Sandra will pull himself up alongside Lady Alessandra. All right. Are the two of you advancing forward? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Lyric. I'll keep pace. <laughs> Lyric stays at the back, just kind of muttering to herself. And... Did you hear something? No, oh, never mind. And she'll go back to writing in her notebook. 
Sounds like dogs. <laughs> Lady Alessandra, you and Sindri press forward. On the other edge of the forest, there is a winding path that you are on. It loops around like a question mark. And on the other side of it, beyond a copse of trees that was blocking your view, you see an old stone bridge bisecting the river. It's the only bridge that you can see from the entire length of the river left and right. There could be another one further down. Not with an easy passage. But as you approach, you will see a pack of wolves. Six of them. Tearing in to a wounded elk on the bridge. The elk is fairly emaciated. A buck in its first or second year of having antlers. The antlers themselves are coated in clinging moss, though. And its eyes, even from here, you can see are slightly milky. It is trying to defend itself, but one of its legs is badly damaged. The wolves. Two at the north, one dancing around the side to get purchase. Two to the south, including one with startlingly white fur compared to the others, are nipping in when it looks away. Finally, a sixth one, the youngest of them, with shaky paws, looks to be somewhat sickly itself, is barking and baying at the south to distract it, but appears to not be willing or courageous enough to enter the fight. What do you do? Um... Should we take out the elk for them? Perhaps they'll leave with it. I don't know if they'll drag it off very well. They might try and defend the bridge because it's there. How deep's the river? Uh, I would say, let's, let me do, I will spend if something good happens and say it is, um, it is fordable with a check. So your horses will be able to, to swim across. It is not terribly fast moving. So, so long as you don't get a really bad roll. Don't you go around. Forward. Go around. Anyone who is here, and Thea, mm. uh, you are going to have the frightened condition. Mm. As you watch these wolves, so similar to the warg that you saw in your memory, tearing into this elk. Their muzzles slick with blood. Can I get anyone who is proficient in medicine? You may make me a medicine check. Not I. Oh, really? Nobody here? I'll allow no. uh, that. We I, had I, that. That's fair. Derp. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay, okay. No healers. Zero. I have four healers. proficiencies, and that's it. Oh, fair. Oh, yeah. I forgot paladins get 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 dick all for proficiencies. Um, okay, so uh, looking down, you know what? I'll allow you to make me an investigation roll then, if you'd like. You don't have to be proficient. I'll let you do it. I am I'll spend, proficient. I'll, Whoa, I'll spend nice. that something good happens to allow it. Fourteen. Fourteen. 22 22 yeah okay all right so glancing down these wolves are wearing it down pretty quickly however even as they are looking there you can see that the elk is fairly injured but not not quite as injured as it should be there's something off about it and Thea, with your 22, looking there you are going to see that not only does this look sickly you can see that 
the moss that is tangling on its antlers is growing into a patch of the skull. <sighs> this thing is very ill. Uh, I, 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 I don't know if the wolves should should eat it t- to begin with. It looks unwell. Well, we can try and scare him off then. I think that would be the best course of action, in my opinion. Um, anybody have a small stone? I have two, actually. One that you, one you're throwing away. That's fine. I'll find more. There are stones everywhere. Here. Alessandra's going to take it, cast light on it, and throw it in the middle of them and hope that a sudden bright light is going to cause them to run. Well, at least right next to the ones in front front of us so that they run that way (laughs) okay tell you what i want you to go ahead and make me a would you like to make me an intimidation roll sure uh can you do it with disadvantage though because they are canines and this is their food source all right that is 10 10. All right, you hurl a rock into the center of this. It kind of clatters next to one of the two wolves at the north. The wolf is going to turn, look at you, and bare its fangs with a... (laughs) Throws its hackles up. Well, we tried that. What What time do you do? So right now, it's probably a little bit after noon. Oh, wait, I have advantage on saving throws against being frightened. Oh, okay. Oops. Then, uh, do you want to make me another will save? Or was sure. It I was just saying that it's not, it's daytime, so we don't have any lanterns lit. No. So if we want to try and bring this fight to them, I have a trick that will probably scare them a lot. All okay. Right. Um, All right. 17. 17? All right. So you'll manage to steal yourself. Sindri. Okay. We can do this. Sindri will um, mm. get off his okay. horse. Big and brave. And then, like, run to, run up to them and then breathe fire onto them and the whole, the whole lot of them. Uh, breathe a 20-foot cone of fire. Right. Okay, are you trying to hit them with this? Yeah, hopefully hitting them with it will scare them off. Hopefully they don't like being on fire. You know, most animals don't like being on fire. I, I feel comfortable saying that without doing a nature check. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I'll also use patient defense. So I'll like run up and then just breathe fire. And then just Okay. Uh, run up and breathe fire. Are you trying to hit the entire crew of them? Yeah, sure. Why not? Like, oh, balls. Okay. All right. I got to do some deck saves then. One sec. Okay. It's, it's not much damage, but it is fire. It's you're breathing fire on them. I, I, you know what? I would take one hit point of damage in real life and run from that personally. But okay, uh, what is my DC? Uh, it should be meow meow meow. Uh, no, uh, thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, uh, that's one pass, two pass, uh, two fail, three fail, four fail, and. So it's 20 feet. Let's just see. Are you running directly up next to them? Yeah, because I can. I have 40 feet of movement. So. 5, 10, 15, 20. So that will not hit the last one. Great. Okay, cool. Uh, it's uh, four points ahead. of fire damage. Four points of fire damage? Yeah. Okay, so... Um, that is going to be enough for something at least um the two in front of you are going to catch the bulk of this the flame is going to lick at them and they are going to let out a yelp as the flames erupt into them and they are going to yelp and are going to try to run from you yeah if you will allow okay oh yeah so they are going to dart further down on the bridge, their hair stinking as it incinerates um it's not too much damage um And the ones on the other side of the bridge take even less as they rush away from this, licking their wounds and snarling back at you. 
as they slowly back away. What you will see, though, is the elk takes the full brunt of it. It throws its head back with a surprisingly human moan of pain and then collapses, its head striking the bridge so hard that it chips the antler right off the right side of its head. It continues to burn and the smoke that rises from it has a dark green gray tinge to it. I don't care for this. Uh, Sindri will pull Sindri, back away. Sindri, can you make me a constitution save, please? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There's the one. There's the one? Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, okay. There we go. All right, uh, you're going to gain the poisoned condition, my friend. Fuck! <laughs> You exhale this huge gout of flame and then take a breath in afterwards only to see these little motes rising up. It is only too late that you realize that what rises out of this thing are not motes, but spores. Shit. All right. So as Sindri's dealing with that, what is everyone else doing? I think holding her breath and running to make sure Sindri gets back okay. All right, sounds Popping good. Only you didn't have to forward. breathe. I was going to ask you, did you have to breathe? I actually don't think I do. You don't, that was the joke. <laughs> I don't. Deathless nature, don't need to breathe. Yeah, I'll just run up and grab, okay. make sure Sindri gets back okay. As you, as you run up, um, the wolves are slowly backing up. The white one in the center, a female, stares at you locks eyes with you. Its amber eyes bore into your own as you grab Sindri and pull him back. You see this creature on the other side of this dead, flaming, diseased elk. Can you do me a favor? Can you make me a an animal handling roll, please? I might be able to... Um, animal handling is a wisdom, right? Yeah, uh, it's a, just 17. You lock eyes with this wolf, this proud creature. She looks at you. And you have a brief flash. Look at them, Carmilla, your uncle says. Listen to the music they make. The children of the night... They recognize the beast in our blood. And we recognize the nobility in them. What do you do? I think, not forgetting that her fangs aren't there, but sort of even without them, I think she bares her teeth briefly and snarls just the tiniest bit but then sort of like bows ahead as and then goes to take Sindri to try to walk him back the wolf will bear its fangs to you a little bit as well anyone who knows wolves know that wolves are not dogs dogs vocalize wolves growl in various states of friendliness this is not an unfriendly growl. It's not a friendly growl. It is an acknowledgement. And with that, the wolves depart, rushing into the woods behind them and out of your sight, leaving nothing but the scent of burnt fur. I don't, I don't feel... I don't feel good. Good. Well, you got real mm -hmm. close to the thing. Something rotten. I gotta I look at his check. eyes for a second. Yeah, without you can totally medicine. You can medicine check without permission. Yeah. <laughs> can I help? Um. L yeah. Totally. 
Uh, so holding Sindri's <laughs> eye open, maybe. And, uh, um, Sindri's exactly. eyes are, um, they are slightly funny. natural. Yay! So with, uh, with Carmela's help, you're looking at Sindri and his eyes are kind of, they're kind of going a bit gray around the edges and they're bloodshot. You can see that his lips are bloodless and a bit of green is kind of rising like he's about to vomit. Um, oh, I'm he, be sick. <laughs> he is he is poisoned. Okay. Um but uh, lay on hands. I was about to say. Yes. Uh spend five points to cure one thing of poison. Yes. Okay. Or neutralize one poison. Alright, so um divine light is going to glow out of your hand as you place it on Sindri. And Sindri, you're going to... Anyone who's watching is going to see, like, the color flood back into his cheeks. For flavor, mm -hmm. I feel like because he breathed it in, he has to get it back out. So the Divine Fire just kind of pushes it back out, so it's going to be like, okay, okay, and turn. <laughs> and I'll, I'll breathe fire out again. I'll use my second use of that just to, like, breathe, like, a gout. Well, I was thinking you might have to puke. <laughs> oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> a very what? acidic fireball fires out of your mouth oh thank you you're welcome thank you that's I don't know what that what's wrong with that thing but as soon as it died it what kind of um it looks half dead yeah. Oh, it's completely dead now, and for for better or worse. Carmilla is going to go over to Anthea and say, uh, "Anthea, um, mm -hmm. it, it, a vial, perhaps. I can get a sample. Perhaps you can tell us what is wrong." Oh, would you do that for me? Thank you. Of course. Um, hmm. Here, ding, 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 clink, 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 clink. Ah, here's an empty <laughs> one. Uh, she will take it and walk over, not having to breathe. Thank um, you. And we'll walk over and try to take a piece of something that sure. looks like you said there was like moss like growing in at the of, antlers. At the antler, yeah. And some of it's broken off. So you could honestly just, uh, the vial's big enough. You could take a little antler tip and go boop, right in. Perfect. And you're wearing gloves, right? Of course. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, she's Perfect. she's actually, she's probably, she's doing the cop thing where she like uses the end of a pen to pick something up, but it's like the <laughs> yeah. end of a sword. Yeah. yeah. The antler's a trigger, so it works perfectly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, dear question. Cop. Yeah. To Christine, this is all looking like whatever created the zombies is it was turning this thing and like the wolf and like it seems like very connected looking. Hmm. Did the zombies look similarly moldy? Like no, mossy? they were ash covered. They were ash covered. Okay. Because the mold growing into the skull made me think immediately. Oh, it's undead. Mm hmm but perhaps it's connected okay but that might be you use your divine sense start, today like, feelings. Mm. we should probably burn this per maybe do you think it would release more because you, you put fire on it and release gross stuff into the air she'll be slowly kind of inching forward um be careful um, my thought is that if we leave it here beside the river It'll rot and contaminate the water. That's true. And the um, predators, what are the scavengers that come out after it, will also eat it. And the wolves will come back for it. We've bought ourselves some time, but not much. That's true. Well, why don't... I kind of hate to take the horses over the bridge because they could breathe in whatever it is and become like it, maybe. How big is this thing? Uh, it's about the size of like a, a deer. Like a pretty average okay. sized deer. I can probably move it. I can hold my breath for a very long time. Okay. Here. Uh, Alessandra's going to hold out rope and suggest that you rope around the antlers and drag it always away from you so you don't get the stuff on your clothing. <laughs> Uh, thank you. 
and thus infect all of us with your clothing. <laughs> it's all selfish. Uh, she'll, uh, yeah, uh, Carmilla will take the rope and do just that. She'll sort of make a couple of lassos and rope around the antlers uh, and then drag it uh, across to the okay. end of the bridge um, and then sort of out of the way, uh, slightly into the bushes, I guess. Okay. Not a problem. You can take it somewhere easily where it can be burned, like not necessarily into the bushes, but nearby. Like there's like a small, like there's a small clearing nearby. Cool. Uh, Cinder will help gather like some deadfall for it. Uh, Carmilla will overly do a every time she goes back to it. <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, take all of the deadfall and stuff that was collected and um, make sure that it is probably try and like scoop some dirt or something around it so that it doesn't spread because we don't want to burn down an entire forest, Ooh, but we also don't want to be yeah. around while this is burning. <laughs> all right. So you can easily can help do with that. the burning part. Anthea, are you <laughs> going to use Firebolt or something to light it up? Uh huh. With Sindri's help. On the count of one. <laughs> you want to. <laughs> right. Before long, the elk the elk's body is reduced to nothing more than bone. And then less. Luckily, as you take a look at it, anybody here with uh, any type of none of you are medically trained, but are any of you good at cooking in character? Pa pa possibly, like, passably, but ships have a cook. I'm not the cook. That's Noble. Fair. I bet you have never okay. touched cooking. <laughs> Noble. <laughs> well, the bones are going to I'm burn. I'm good at mixing things. Good at mixing things. Honestly, the inside of the beast, the, the more that the outer layers burn down, the less you are worried. And before yeah. long, it is nothing less than a skeleton, or nothing more than a skeleton, and then not much more than ash if you let it burn for a while. And as you watch, let the embers burn themselves down to a soft, soft simmer. A little voice from the back of your group will pipe up. I'm sorry, what were we talking about? Does anyone else smell venison? Lyric will say. <laughs> It's, it's all right, Lyric. We are um, almost back at uh, Fendolin. Oh, good. Sorry, I have this this tune stuck in my head I can't get out. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Just write it down and maybe it's stuck in your head for a reason. Is it never mm -hmm. ending? Yes, my friends, it goes on and on. <laughs> oh my, that must be horribly uncomfortable. Or annoying, rather. Central mm -hmm. will kind of look at Carmilla, just like... Did something happen? Maybe she hit her head too hard. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I like to pop up where I'm <laughs> not being asked questions. <laughs> I love that too. Yeah, I feel like you've in our traveling together, you've just gotten used to answering for Carmilla because she doesn't like to speak. <laughs> I, I think Andrea may be right. I, I didn't see anything happen, but perhaps in the fight with the zombies. I'm kind of worried about her. She's let's get back. Let's go back to Fandolin. Like she's not even here. I think she'll be okay. I mean, sometimes I get that way too when I have this really good idea for a new little um, invention of mine and our concoction. It's true. <laughs> I've had yeah. to save her from walking off many a cliff. Uh, yeah, uh, I've, figuratively I've, and literally. Yeah. I, I've known Lyric for a while now. I've never seen her quite this carried away. Let's go, let's go back to town. I'm tired of these woods for a moment. I need to get some supplies, get a good night's sleep. Get all the... Get back to get civilization. Back. Yeah, I... 
And get the engine back. Yeah. True. How far are we out of town? About two hours at this point. Okay. Um, do we still have rations, like cured meats and stuff? Of course. Okay. As we start to leave, I think um, Carmilla is going to like empty her bag of any rations and stuff sort of nearby for the wolves. Okay. Try to hide it from everybody. Sounds good. As you do so, you hide it. And as you head back to your horse and begin to walk away, or begin to ride away, out of the corner of your eye, you'll see a canine shape in the undergrowth and amber eyes watching you from the shadows. The ride back to Fandolin is peaceful from that point. It's comfortable. And before long, you'll find yourself back in the relative safety of the village. People are milling around. It is getting close to closing time for the day. Nearly, nearly fourth bell in the afternoon. Where are you headed to? Sorry. Um, I was going to say we should probably, st we could stop in at the Stonehill Inn, get ourselves set up there. Uh, mm. I met Lady Alessandra, you have a home to go to, but I think we should get, have a chat with uh, Sildar and That's sell funny. any any of the crap we need to sell. Also, mm. we don't exactly have food in my home. Well, I would have gone off ages ago if you did. I'll get some room set up. Um, same arrangement as before. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. You can easily split up. As you wander in through the northern entrance of the tribe or trail takes you uh, back out of town, you're going to immediately pass by uh, Barthen's provisions and just there on your right hand side is the smithy of town where you're going to see a haggard um haggard looking human man in his uh mid to late 50s working on working at an anvil as well as a um someone else in the back stoking the forge on the other side from the shrine of luck you will see uh, I can't remember her name there we go I never can remember her name I don't know why it is that uh, that sister Garel is is always falling out of my mind but she is I think it's because it's like really it's it's a lot in the mouth Garel right it's I very feel I, I want to say Gabriel yeah. every time and I'm like that's not it that just rolls off the tongue kind of better than Garel right. I can't even say it from really <laughs> So, as you um, as you are making your way in there, you'll see that she is just kind of smiling, going about her day, arranging things at the shrine, cleaning, polishing. And as you ride back in, she gives you a little wave. Hello. Hello. Oh, we Been talked to Agatha. Agatha. <gasps> Oh my, you did? Is that her name? Uh, yes, we did, actually. She was quite lovely. Um. What did you discover? Yeah, that's a great question. So, <laughs> she gave the book to someone. Oh, here, let me just check my book, sorry. Um. If anyone remembers, you can totally pipe in. I don't think I actually wrote it down. Uh, that... I don't think I wrote anything down from that one. Oh, shit. Sorry. It's only been a month and a half. Oh, um, God. So, the Wasn't Banshee... it... It was with the Red Wizard of Thay? With Harmon? That's where they think it is? That's right. The Wizard of Thay. Ah, uh, yes! Distance of notes! Thay. Good job! <laughs> <laughs> um, Much love, Krista. Yes. Give it... To the Wizard from Thay. Oh, my. 
Harmon? Yeah. Harmon. Damn Harmon. All right. Well, thank you so much. Was it any trouble? Did you... Did she like the comb? Was it helpful? She did like the comb. She was quite pretty when she... It was quite pretty. She gave me the scarf, too. That's Bing. strangely lovely. <laughs> she was quite nice, really. Hmm. Huh. After she found out that we weren't there to... What did she put it? Bust her? She was... Hmm. Huh. She... she uh, anyway... She's had people be very mean to her lately, so she was mm, happy for the company. I I have to be honest, I didn't expect it going that way. I didn't know what to expect. Of course. And when, you, um, when you go in like that and you don't have any expectations on it going poorly or having a fight or anything. You just knocked. We just knocked, and you're just polite, and then things will go well. <laughs> it really is like they're saying about you all. Mm, what's that? What? You really are something of a guiding light around here. Oh. Between being guidance counselors to ruffians, who are, a couple of them have agreed to help fix up the town on a work release program well that's good I mean it will be good skills and keep them from getting in trouble again after they get out of jail mm -hmm. between that and all of this I don't think we could do this without you but as promised um... here and she will uh, go into a small vestibule box and pull out three potions of healing as promised. Oh, thank you. Ah, thank you. Uh, if we may ask one more thing of you. Yes, of course. Ha has there been any word of uh, Glastaff and his ilk? The Red Brands, um, um, El Elgin saw, um, Pardon me, Mr. Adderleaf, Alderleaf, saw some riders heading off to the west, away from, away from the, the old manor. We think that they were the last ones there, but none of them looked like you, well, none of them had a glass staff, as far as I can tell. Um, Sildar has been going around and making sure everyone knows that it was a man named Yarno? We have some posters yeah, up now. So if we do see him, unless he shaves, he should be easy to spot. Good. Uh, we did not want our meddling to have caused any harm to your town. Sometimes meddling is good. I happen to think that um, luck is a coin toss. As, as a priestess of Temora, I have to believe that randomness brings good and bad. The coin brought the red brands and, well, fortunes righted themselves and brought you here. We're lucky to have you. Well, thank you for your kind words. Uh, I believe we will go see about lodging for the evening. Thank you again. Of course. Mm -hmm. There's no problem going in and getting a hold of your old rooms. In fact... Told, uh, Toblin hasn't given them up yet. They've been held in your name. Not like anyone else is coming through town. And uh, as soon as you get in, Pip 
Toblin's son comes up to you with a thousand questions about what you've been doing, why you've been doing that, why do you smell weird, why do you smell like a burnt dog? Well, well you... funny story about that one. <laughs> I think Sindri could tell it best. Oh, I... You know, this is a great, great conversation to have around the fire later this evening. Why don't you let us get some of the blood and mud off our clothing? And we'll tell you a story when we get in later this evening. Um, but it's very scary. It's very scary. Hey, and he'll, leave the nice uh, people alone. Uh, your rooms are still ready upstairs if you'd like them. Topon, that's so kind of you. I would. Hey, I'll be happy to take them again. Uh, you've missed. Uh, you've missed lunch and dinner's a couple of hours away still. But uh, we've got some. We've got some breads. They're a little bit old, but if you want a snack, I can have them cut up. Get some butter on them. That sounds lovely. Thank you so much, Toblin. And Pip, I do I do have a story for you. Oh, it involves a great big dragon. <laughs> and then Sindri will wink and then run up the stairs to the room. What do you mean a dragon? I need to know. <laughs> you need An to do your chores. Dragon. See you later. You all head up. Unload your things. And then, uh, do you head over to do some selling? Yes. Selling time. Totally. Got, totally. We, have, we have a couple things to sell. Just a couple. So All right, things. so what are you thinking? <laughs> Barthens Provisions or Lion Shield Coister or down to, or Coster, or down to the mining exchange? Where do you think you try to sell stuff? So uh, uh, Lion, Lion Shield is where uh, most of, like, the Marshall Provisions are. And the, the Barthens Provisions, of course, is the general store. If any of them will buy our um, or our uh, gems we got, that's not the mining exchange. That would be ideal because okay, they tried to hose us last time. They did. Um, so uh, for that, honestly, you probably have the best chance of, at provisions. Uh, but the mining exchange will be the opportune place to get rid of those. Uh, let's get let's get rid of everything else and then try and deal with the gems last. All right. You know what? I think we could do the mining exchange and not have them. What did you say? Pull the wool over our eyes. We did it last time. We figured out they were trying to, to, to cheat us. Then we'll do it again. Put our foot down. <laughs> or something right. like that. Uh, your so guidance, I, I trust you. Okay. Um. Let's get let's let's get everything else done first. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. I think we got some. Let's see. What do we have to sell here? We have we have a bunch of just gems. Um. Oh, we also have um. That satchel of bronze or brass dragon scales. Of uh, the ingots for them. Mm. Uh. We also have a bunch of dragon parts, and we should not leave those in the inn. That would be... Probably not. Received very poorly. So maybe the blacksmith first? Or do we want to do that last because we need to get some money saved up first? Um, what else are we selling? Probably the goblets, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think Anthea... You kept the necklace with the emerald pendant found in that herbalism shop, right? So, um, if we theoretically went there, I don't think we actually went there. You we did. were going to, but there were scary things. Oh, was that something else that we've had scary things around it? Yeah, we I, were yeah, like, ah, did. we'll do it in the morning. Oh, okay. We we did well, it kind of. We did a quick know. pass. Oh, yes. I, I think I, I wrote it down so that means we got our hands on it. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Okay, Caitlin. I try not to write it until we actually have it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Sure. Yep. We'd sell that. I can't remember if it had anything special about it or if it was just a gem. I don't remember. I, don't I think it was just an expensive it. gem. Okay. So we can, or I think. Oh, yeah. But Anthea was looking for gems, right, for her stuff. Yeah, but I already found it. Oh, okay. Um, my my prop is somewhere. But no, I got the gem that I wanted. I just wanted oh, okay, one. Cool. Sorry, my from a homunculus. Um, Perfect. but yeah. Otherwise. Alessandra will be very interested in selling stuff and seeing if everybody is willing to advance her some gold to 
repair the armor that she found in her aunt's place, and she will take a lesser cut later <laughs> to make up. Oh, I don't mind. For not getting damaged quite so easily. And for, so we also have that pile Lady of Alessandro. Sorry. Lady Alessandro, you have uh, carried more than your fair share of the weight in many of our adventures so far. I believe it entirely understandable for you to take a greater cut of the profits. Oh, well, thank you. Um... Yes. Onward. <laughs> All right. Let's. Um, so I guess we have like the gems to sell, like the gems to sell, the necklace to sell, and then the goblets. Mm -hmm. And that, okay. yeah, the mining exchange would be the best place for all of the. That yeah. Stuff. I Sindri does not want to be, take the lead on this, so he's gonna kind of like pointedly look at the nobles and the the artisan and be like. I'll stable the horses. Uh, <laughs> I'll I'll join you there. We're just a muscle. We're leaving this to uh, <laughs> Tantia. Yeah, just... I'll do yeah. my best. Okay. You easily make it inside of the um, the mining exchange. You're gonna go there first. Get it out of the way. Let's do it. Let's do it. Then okay. we can get some gold, and then we can buy the other All stuff. Right. Let's go. All right. Heading into the mining exchange, Halia Thornton uh, will uh, will be waiting there, and as you enter, the bell will go off above the door. Hello. I believe that's what she spoke like. It's been two months. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Hello. Welcome. Hello. We're here to sell some stuff to you. Please. Well, show me what you have. Okay. Where do we? I don't have it. <laughs> uh, Sorry. Lady uh, Alessandra. Uh, <laughs> um, we have six lustrous amethysts. Mm -hmm. Lustrous amethysts. Uh -huh. All right. Well, let me see what you have here. She pulls out a little gem lens and begins inspecting them. Some of these are quite nice. Interesting. Thank you. I think we could probably yes. take them off your hands. What were you expecting for them? Can I roll? Sure, you absolutely can. Go ahead and uh, you can make me an investigation roll. You can make nice. me a... Sure, if you have investigation, go ahead and do that. Yeah. Can can I help yeah. with noble, noble knowledge? <laughs> I've seen stones Yay. before. I've help seen action. stones in my day. Can you just I've like bend stones. down? To like whisper in my ear if I'm like yeah. off the mark. <laughs> Actually, I've seen this. Oh, really 19, cool. right? So that's a 24. 24, that sounds good. So hmm. uh, looking down, you you get a rough idea of what they're worth. So you'll know. Um, Chris, you have the values for everything, right? So I have the value for the amethyst. I don't have the value for the goblets. Uh, the goblets. No, were those goblets picked up in the town, or were those picked up in the ruffian's Dragon's lair? Dragon's hoard. Four silver goblets and set with mm. stones. Uh, then that is easy for me to get for you. One moment, please. Dragon's hoard. Uh, so uh, in the, the in the treasure there, there were twenty one hundred copper pieces, one hundred and thirty gold pieces, four silver goblets worth sixty gold each. So two forty. So two hundred and forty there. Uh, a spell scroll of Misty Step and of Lightning Bolt. And then Hugh, the Battle Axe. Um, so well, that is all that. Do you? Step. Is there anything else that you do not have the uh, points for? Or the, uh, uh, the necklace. The gold necklace with emerald pendant. Okay, that is worth 200 gold. Okay. Nice. And then the Amethyst. All right, and where did you get the amethyst? Uh, they, they were in the coffer from the. Oh, so that was uh, those were worth three hundred, I believe. I believe they were three hundred, yeah. Okay. Um, and the dragon scales were worth about seventy-five. The the oh, dragon scales that selling? you found, the brass dragon scales, were worth about. 75. Are we selling those here? I'm just Girl, saying that that's what they're worth, just for your oh, for your knowledge. 
But my impulse as a player is to like make something cool out of them. I don't mm -hmm. need anything. Uh, <laughs> I'm a monk. I have no gear that really works great for me. Someone suggested a really cool like dragon tooth, uh, dragon tooth dagger, uh, which I might talk oh. to the, the smithy about making or putting together for me. But otherwise, like, nice. there's no point. It's you just... get like cestuses or gauntlets. Yeah, I could do like, oh yeah, it's like talk about like getting Tifa gloves made. Like right. from fall. Yeah. So <laughs> maybe maybe I'll talk to them about that with the if I could use my share of the 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 loot to buy the dragon the brass dragon's knuckles or uh ingots. Are you gonna get suspenders and just show off the goods? I mean listen, I if I could dramatically throw off the poncho and have like suspenders Ooh. and like short shorts, yeah, absolutely. And like a crop top. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love it. Dress like Johnny Depp in Nightmare on Elm Street. Blech. Oh god, that is a <laughs> <laughs> fucking pull. Hopefully I meet a better end than like a fountain of blood in a bed. Eh, you know. The old Bjork. Spoilers for Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> yeah, it's only 50 years old at this point. 45? Oh it's, it's old. Anyway, um, so uh, looking at that, you'll have the rough appraisal of there and she'll, she'll give it a perusal and say I can definitely take the gems off your hands and the goblets as well. At the very least, they could be smelted down, and the gemstones on them could be turned to something else. What are you thinking okay. for them? Make me a persuasion roll. <laughs> Can I help? I'm going to spend a hurt the more to cancel your help. Ah, uh, how dare! It's okay. I'll yeah. waste your your hurt the mores. Do it. I got. I got. Yeah, six them, get so. it. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I'd like to spend my determination. I would like you to. 16! <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Um, I am going to... Sp so I was doing a roll-off against you. Oh. And uh, I'm going to spend a Hurt the More to re-roll that nat one. Um, <laughs> so she's not like, like, here are some gems. Oh, here's the deed to the merchant exchange. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now that's just a fail. Okay. So you got a 16? Yeah. Okay. So she got a she got a 15. So pretty close. Um, she's going to, she'll haggle with you a little bit. What is the grand total value of all of the stuff you were selling? So the grand total value was 740, but she was going to say 750. Okay. She's going to offer you <laughs> seven for it on the first bid. Mm, 745. I'm not good at hanging. <laughs> Don't tell her that. You did just do a service for the town. 725. We'll meet in the middle. Okay. Okay. So add 725 gold to your total. She will count it out for you. By the way, if you're interested, I can hear you jingle jangling a lot back there, Mr. Sindri. <laughs> I could... I could do um, an easy exchange for a small fee. Some of your smaller coins into larger coins. That's actually a, probably a very good idea. Cons <laughs> out of character. Because we're out of character, around. you have 2,000 plus <laughs> copper coins. Yeah, I, I'm just having a Santa sack full of like... And that should be your monk weapon, just socks full of that. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Get wrecked. Water. So yeah, full uh, of pennies is a monk weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's do that. Um, so if we can break that in, into bars or... Yeah, totally. Uh, uh, how much? What's the grand total? Uh, 2,100 uh, pieces of copper. 2,100 pieces of copper. Uh, with the exchange there, that will be... Uh, so what is that? 2,100 divided by 100. I don't know why I had to count that. Uh, so you'll get, uh, she'll trade it for 20 gold pieces and five silver pieces. Bless. So, so you'll lose five silver in the exchange. You know what? Worth. So for our grand total from that purchase was uh, 760 with 50 uh, and five silver. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's very good. All right. 
By the way, you didn't happen to have ever found any of those documents, did you? You didn't go back to the manor? Afraid not. Haven't been back yet. We've been trying to get Gundren, uh, Rusty Gundren. Hmm. Good luck. I do miss that old so-and-so. He does have that effect on people. <laughs> Charming in his own way, isn't he? In a lot of ways, actually. He always buys the first round of drinks. I do miss If you that. ask him to. <laughs> well. Be well. Before you, um, you should probably skedaddle before you break my bank. Ideally, yes. Uh, as soon as Sindri gets outside, he'll, like, high-five <laughs> Anthea. Yeah! That went so well! <laughs> you did a great job. Thanks. I did my best. We have... Oh, you helped me, too! Thank you. <laughs> you were all scary behind my back. She's looking at, um, Carmilla. <laughs> well, you did very good at your negotiating this time. I think you're learning quite quickly. I'm doing my best. It's it's tricky. It's it's challenging, but it's fun. Hmm. People are the greatest experiment, I think. Really? Yeah. So, where are y'all headed now? Blacksmith? Sure. All right. Heading your way to the blacksmith. Um... I'll say that, Alessandra, during that scene there, you would have broken away, gone back, and retrieved your aunt's armor. Okay. Um, and she will like, check with the others again. Uh, you sure you don't mind me taking an extra 400 gold? That's okay. Okay. Thank you. 444, to be precise. <laughs> Plus three... Her 306 brings her to 750, which is the half price of plate, which is what we'd agreed on earlier as the price mm -hmm. for fixing it. <laughs> okay. So, making your way over to the blacksmith shop. There's a man who's pushing 50 years old. A little haggard, ruddy-faced. Um, a beefy build, but looks... Like he doesn't sleep particularly well with graying blonde hair and a full goatee that hangs a bit. Just a couple of little knots at the bottom where it's been braided. About five foot nine. Slightly taller than than the normal normal elf in Faerun. Working behind the forge. He's wearing not much more than an apron and slacks and a pair of big blacksmith's gloves that he wipes the torrential sheen of sweat from his forehead with as you approach. Howdy. What can I do for you? Uh, are you able to repair plate armor? He hawks and spits onto the dirt. Yeah. I can repair most things. Wonderful. But... Um. What you got? Set it down there on the table. Bundle, bundle, bundle. Clank, clank. <laughs> I know that armor. You're, uh... You're one of them Barraquels, ain't you? Uh, yes. Um, Alessandra. Shame what happened to your aunt. Yeah. Oh. She was a right interesting old codger. Lots of stories. Good at I darts. I wish I'd gotten to meet her. Eh. Alright, that's the way it is. <sighs> he takes a look at the plate mail. This is intricate shit. I gotta be honest with you. I do studding for leather armor, and I've I've knocked the the dents out of some breastplates before, but this is a lot. 
Uh, this a lot of this is corroded or just broken. So it's not. I don't know if it'd be worth your time. You should probably just head back to Nether Neverwinter and pick up a new set. I don't know that we have time for that. Gundren might die before we can make it to him, then. So he really is missing. Huh. Uh-huh. Uh, Gundren's a bit of a... He looks you up and down. Not my type of dwarf, but... Suppose in some companies he's tolerable. He doesn't deserve what's what's happened to him then. But I'm sorry, I don't think that uh that I, I can get this done in any reasonable time. This would take me a week, maybe more. I just ain't accustomed to this type of worksmanship. You need somebody who studied that. And Is there anybody in nearby? Mm-hmm. And as he says that, in the back room, you're going to hear a bit of tinking. Someone looks like they're they're hammering out the edging on a bit of metal. Is going to push through a little bit of a of a cloth overhang separating the back room and the forge, and a human woman uh, is going to take a step out. She's well, maybe maybe in her mid twenties. She's. Not terribly tall, but powerfully muscled. A little bit shorter than the blacksmith here. She has dark umber skin, and her hair is thick and coarse, and pulled back into these road dreadlocks that are kind of tied up in this big nape at the back of her neck. They're all lemon bleached out to yellow. And she peers out a little couple scars along her cheeks, probably from errant bits of burning iron or coals that have splashed up at her face. She'll peer out. I'm sorry, is he giving you trouble? What? What's wrong with that, Algar? I'm pretty sure that can be done. Well, I don't know. It's listen, Maza. This is uh, this armor shit. I mean, it's not shit. It's ceremonial. She leans out, gives it a prod. I've seen armor like this in Neverwinter. That would make sense. It's probably what she took with her when she left the rest of the family. I did an apprenticeship up there when I was visiting my dad. I, uh, I think I could probably do it if Alger really? lets me. If you want to waste your time on that and you want to, you know, you got all the rest of your chores done, all your work done, you can waste as much time as you want. So long as they got coin. But this is beyond me. You want to try some fool's errand? Go ahead. But we are not liable if she breaks it. Heirloom or not. I believe you should have more faith in your staff and the property of the Berkwils. Mm. Yeah. Well... I just need to work as armor. I got faith in her to make a hoe or a rake but, or some pickaxes, but this is uh, fine. It's your time and it's your money. And he'll, without saying a thing, will walk out into the uh, walk into the back of the forge. All right. Well, introductions to be made. I'm Maza. Maza Fieldsalder. I'm the apprentice here at the Forge. Alessandra. 
Um, you think you can fix it? I think probably. All right. Honestly, I'm much more interested in weapons and 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 cool shite than I am dealing with. Uh, let me just put it this way: if I have to make another hole or hear another hole joke. I'm going to take one of those sickles and have some lifelong regrets. Um, so I need that repaired. I, mm -hmm. I think I have enough to pay for it. What, what would be reasonable? Well, I mean, the shell's mostly here. Um, I could probably get to it. Um, as soon do you need it? As soon as possible. Make me a persuasion roll. <laughs> Can I help having I given eight, her please. faith in herself? Sure. sure. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. I rolled an 18, but I add 5, so 23. Okay. Okay. I mean, most of the bones of this are still here. It's mostly just filling in the patchwork, making sure some of the hinges are, are repaired. I mean, I'm done with all of my chores. I was just doing some extra fletching work. So, I'll make you a deal. Normally, a suit of armor like this would probably run you 1,500, 2,000 pieces of gold. I can repair this one for you. Do you have any materials on you? Do you want to incorporate it into it? Do we? I don't think so. We actually, we, I have just the thing, actually. Uh, Sindri will uh, pull out the brass dragon ingot. Oh. Holy shite. Is that dragon scale? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and we actually have some more. Mm -hmm. uh, Anthea? Hello. Um, how much dragon scale do we have? Well, we didn't take the whole dragon. What kind of dragon. people are these people that they can ask questions? Like, well, how much dragon scale do we have on us? Well, um... Well, we so it didn't really one. count, though. But we didn't it, take the whole dragon. Sindri so will pull out, like, the plates and plates of green dragon scale. But there's a her, lot. Her jaw just drops halfway into her chest at this point. Is <laughs> It's well, been a big week. If you're more interested in weapons as well... I was going to do this myself, but maybe you would be able to do it much better. Um, it's very rusty, and she'll show off the battle axe. <laughs> it's called Hue. It has but a it name. needs to be polished up. It's a bit... It's, I think it's been sitting outside for a while. Okay, so you'd like it to be uh, to be cleaned up? Just a little. I think it deserves it, really. I could probably grind Being some of the rust off of it without all. a problem. Uh... Boy. Just make her jaw drop further. <laughs> Copper dragon scale. Or brass dragon? Is it, it was brass. It's it was brass. brass. Brass dragon. I think the armor was like gold, right? It was goldish, yeah. Gold color. Gold and green works nice together. This is true. Bronze could... would also look good with it. Okay, so the dragon scales that you have. So you have brass dragon scale? Yeah, we have ingot uh, from it. Hmm. That's right. And then, then we have like just uh, I think you said enough uh, gr uh, green dragon scale to make scale mail make a armor, scale mail. Uh, and then a yep. shield as well. Yep, you get quite a bit out of that. Uh, so she's going to take a long look at that stuff just with this fangirl glitter in her eyes that is impossible for her to hide. Yeah, it's impossible. Of course, for her whatever to hide. in your professional opinion would work best. But there's all butter, 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 butter. <laughs> <laughs> okay but we do need to depart on a rescue mission as quickly as we can so obviously not compromising on the quality of the fix but what do you think will be the most time needed if I if I work through the night I could probably have something by midday tomorrow. All right. Maybe faster. 
it won't be perfect and none of the etching will be done. I can't do any of the engraving in that time to match the patterns. Um, but it'd be functional. That's what matters. I like you. I was worried when I saw the two of you approach through the window. She gestures at you and Carmilla. With your fancy, fancy rags and all that, I was worried that you were coming in looking for something a bit fancier than... Uh, uh, Fence? This was my brother's training outfit. It's what I could take. You know we have a tailor in town that could probably get you fit into something that's that's uh, befitting the curves of a lady, eh? Oh. That's a good idea. Hmm. Maybe afterwards. I think I'm going to spend all my money on this, though. All right. Well, uh, in that case, um, we'll strip off your armor. Whatever you've got on right now. And uh, can you T-pose for me? We're going to take some measurements. I want to make okay. sure this thing fits well. Okay. So she'll begin quickly measuring you, jotting down with a square pencil. I just had chain mail on, so it won't exactly take long to get off. Mm -hmm. And as she's working and, and jotting down these notes, she's going to say, like I said before, if you've got the, ma the material for me to work with, and I'll make whatever you need, but uh, if you let me, I'll make a barter with you. I'll do some of the work for you, and I'll do it. I'll do it pretty cheap. I could probably do this for you. You've provided the materials. I'll do it for five hundred for two conditions. All right. Anything that I don't use, I get to keep. I won't skimp, I won't cut corners. But if there's a plate left over that can't be incorporated into anything else without um, stretching it to the point where it would be useless, I get to hang on to it. And so, yeah, have you will kind of look enough? at the others and just make sure that they're okay with that before she'll agree. Oh, that's fine. I'm and sorry. Second what? Off. Oh, sorry. No, go on. Sorry, I didn't see you there. Carmilla, you were saying something. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just asking you if you have enough for what you needed it for. Did you need any of those scales for yourself, for your experiments? No. I have other parts. I'll be back I in just a moment. I other, took the other <laughs> dragon parts. <laughs> Wonderful. I think so. Uh, yes, I don't have a problem with it. All right. So, um, and then the other condition is you guys are adventurers, hey? You've been going around yeah. doing adventuring at the very least. I guess so. At this yeah. point. You bring, you find anything weird? Any weapons? Any armor? Strange make? You bring it back here for me to look at. Before you sell it, or anything like that. If I don't think we can that promise we're reasonable. coming this way, but we will do our best. You, you're not coming back here after you go rescue your friend. We're just well, in town. probably. I mean, you've got a house in town, don't you? you? Isn't that the fancy one on the corner? Yes. Yeah, sorry, oh. do you just mean this one time of our one adventure of getting... Well, I mean any time that you come through. All right. I think that's Ooh. totally fair. Yeah, any time we come through, if we found something interesting, show you before selling it. Good. That sounds reasonable. All right. Um, I guess the last thing I need to know, are you right or left-handed? Right-handed. <laughs> and are there any other modifications that you need in the armor? Uh, she'll kind of look at it carefully, and unless there's anything really obvious and weird about it, then... Needs holes for wings. 
They're uh, not physical wings, I don't oh, think. Oh, they're they're ethereal? Okay. Then in that case. Yeah. Let me just double check real quick, but I'm pretty sure double they're check. like luminous <laughs> spectral wings. Be... It's a they spectral? are spectral. Okay. So they will manifest however they need to manifest. They've... She doesn't have holes because she gained these after getting here, so she already was wearing plain armor at that point. And there's no issue. Perfect. So I think they just kind of flutter through the armor. <laughs> All right, then I'll get to work right now. Check back in the morning on the progress and if I need any additional fittings. Sounds good. I'll see Ooh. you first thing tomorrow then. Dragon scale. Was there anything you wanted done with the grain stuff? Or do you want me just to hang on to it for you? Uh, I don't know if Sindri had any plans. He was talking about making gloves at one point. Mm -hmm. He stepped aside. Um, no, we'll just talk I... about it. If you could hold on to it for now. Yeah, I could put it aside for now. It's too bad your friend had to go to the loo. Mm. <laughs> well. There's a nearby outhouse that Cindy went in over to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Hi. she's going to be working on your plate at mail for the entire night. So there's no time to make anything else today. That sounds good. <laughs> Uh, so oh, has, has Lyric gone off to set up our, our rooms, perhaps? Has, pardon? Lyric gone off to set up our oh, rooms. Oh, yeah. Perhaps. Lyric, you got your room set up. Lyric is up in up in her room going, hum, 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 hum. what is this? <laughs> what is this melody? <laughs> and uh, with that, is there anything else you want to do in town? Mm, I would like to... Polynthia aside briefly okay. um, and uh, sort of settle her down and go um, Anthea I, yes. we both know my situation you have very kindly offered to help to try to figure out a solution uh, yes did I I believe it was that situation that caused my issues when we were with Redoth was it terribly obvious to everyone what happened mm. it was like a little weird but I don't know if I think they kind of explained it away I don't think that they think anything was weird about it okay I don't think it was too terribly obvious, but okay. I, just because I know, I might. Be you're looking for it. You're aware. And yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I suppose I I have briefly spoken to Lyric about this, but and and I don't believe Sindri is one to judge. Um. However, I do worry about Lady Alessandra's reaction to traveling with someone of my disposition. And mm. I don't know if she has sensed anything yet. I I don't. I know she is a a paladin of some variety, but I don't terribly know her family that well. But no reaction uh, from her so far. I don't think terribly much. Anthea also was definitely not paying too much attention to that. Oh, for sure. But... Of course, <laughs> of course, she hasn't. But I could, like. Bring it up really, or not, not, not the situation, but bring up her thoughts towards you very subtly at some point. Yes, if you would be willing to do that. Krista was definitely going to have a conversation with Christine, but that conversation sounds way fucking better. <laughs> so yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Which, yes, I would actually really appreciate that. <laughs> On that note, just to refresh what... I remember happening. <laughs> I'm you pretty failed sure. a lot of checks. <laughs> yes. I'm pretty sure the druid chick flat out told us she's got some undead in her. Okay. <laughs> like flat out told us exactly what you were. Not exactly pretty, though. Pretty much though, I thought. Mm. It was pretty like clear. 
Okay. I, I thought the joke was that it was made very, very clear, and then you rolled something that just, like, really flumped it, and so you didn't figure it out? I don't know. Kelly, do you well, remember think... at all? Nope. I I'm think I understood say. it pretty well <laughs> in my rem memory, but <laughs> Elisandra just didn't care because you weren't evil. Right, okay. You're not setting off any evil sense, so she's like, well, eh, whatever. You're not otherworldly. Mm. You're not, like, uh, extra planar, gotcha. so she doesn't actually care. <laughs> So it was okay, that Christine fair. kept botching rolls at the beginning of the campaign to notice right. anything. Mm, okay. And then but that was, time when she said it, it that was time fine. it was okay. there were gotcha, no rolls gotcha. required because it was pretty blatant. No, she flat out just was like, "Yeah, no, she's got undead in her." She's like, <laughs> "She's got, she's got the touch. She's got the power." And I love, I love the idea that Anthea didn't remember that because she wasn't paying mm. attention, so it does not occur. And to her. she already knew, so she was like, mm. "Exactly." Yeah. She didn't of it. Yeah. Um, so if Elizander yeah. gets questions, she's gonna look at them and like. What? <laughs> uh, yes. No, if yeah, you could know. perhaps, perhaps uh, go down that line of questioning just so I, I, I will understand if I should stay here while you all look for Grumdahl or perhaps the other way around or I would understand that she no longer wants to travel with me uh, if that is made clear to her. But I would like to give everyone the opportunity. I feel I have been deceitful for too long already. So while you're doing all this, you guys, did you go off by yourselves? Yeah, <laughs> I probably, or are we all, yeah, like I probably went, like, just went upstairs. <laughs> I probably pulled her like outside, like we, or we, I caught her before we went in or something okay. like that. Mm, that makes sense. Yeah. Sindri sitting on a bar stool telling Pip all about this big green, green dragon. <laughs> make, me a, make me a persuasion roll to, or a performance yeah. roll. Um, I get advantage on this uh, because oh, I just uh, crit because I use my uh, dragon. Ooh. So <laughs> I'm using persuasion. Whoa! Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. How did you? That isn't making sense. Big. You're not even that. You're not even that tough. Excuse you. You don't look that tough. That's fair. <laughs> I got hit in the face by a goblin and I almost died. But with my friends, with dragon, I, with Lady wow. Baraquel, and with Anthea, the Ar the alchemist, and the brave Lady Carmilla, we slew the dragon. Lady Lady Alessandra descended like an avenging soul from the heavens. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm. It was lyric. <laughs> oh yeah, it's story time. It's story time. Whoa. Can I? Yeah. Do you need a squire? Lady Alessandra probably does. She's a noble. Yeah, but 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 she's probably got doesn't Is Not it yet, Lyric her squire? Nah. Lyric's a a bard of great renown. She's from Candlekeep. She studied. She went to fantasy grad school. Wow. I don't know what Years. any of those words mean. Neither do I. Do you need another beer? I would love another beer. And <laughs> he scrams over to get you more beer. And he'll like Sindri will wink at Tob Toblin and like put his feet up on a chair. Don't mind me. <laughs> so dragon killing. Apparently we're in the business. That was real? Most of it. The dragon was. Whoop. Venom Fang. What part they lived in Tall just... Tree. Or uh, Thunder Tree. What part were you exaggerating then? Lady Carmilla wasn't there, it was Lyric. That's what you chose to exaggerate? Lady, Lady Carmilla fell under the spell of the dark th town of Thunder Tree. Oof. And we we came through and we conquered it. We freed the town from the cultists. Well, um... Shit. I know, right? So, sorry. Um, I'm shocked. I've never heard such language. Yeah, don't let the kids hear me swear. Hip earmuffs. <laughs> what? Oh, here's your beer. 
Thank you. Is dad swearing yeah, again? I'm not swearing. Nope. I'm swearing. Well, Don't worry about it. Swear. I'll try not to. That, you know what? That can be your first squirrely duty for me. What? Remind me not to swear when I'm in here. Understood. He salutes. Sindri will flip him a copper. Yeah. Yeah. And with I that, am so excited. Toplin's going to go back to preparing dinner because it's getting near the dinner rush. Um, what is everybody else doing? So, um, Lady Alessandra, you're inside there. Lyric is kind of just at the bar, nursing a drink and scribbling in a book. I think Alessandra is attempting as much as she can with like a glowing halo around her head to lay low and not be paid attention to while Sindri's telling the story. Okay. Did you and... tell him the story already? You hear a voice from the door as uh, Carmilla and Anthea enter. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I did. He wouldn't stop until... Uh, oh. But you know what? I wanted to be there. There's time for another telling. I mean, that's true. And maybe with some pyrotechnics to go along with it. Ooh! Can you, uh... <laughs> can you make smoke? Like... Like the dark dragon venom fang belched out of their tongue, stripping flesh from bones. I'm sure I could figure it out. Outside, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Probably a better idea. Wait, I have... No, I shouldn't do that. No. Oh, be... you should. Oh, no, that'd be too spooky. Oh, I think that's okay. <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> will you help me with the next telling? Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right. Maybe after dinner. I'm uh, hoping someone shows up. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, Carmilla is going to sort of walk in behind uh, Anthea, probably look, like, go to walk to sit in the corner and hide, which is what she's been doing, like, this whole time we've been in town. Notice... <laughs> Only no to notice that Alessandra's already <laughs> sitting there. Like, she's already just... noticed your habit. <laughs> <laughs> kind of super super nonchalantly uh turn on her heel <laughs> and walk towards lyric and just sit next to the bar quietly next to her <laughs> lyric is going to suddenly look at you with a great intensity <laughs> what rhymes with rutabaga do the baker it's a brand of carts That might work. And she'll go back to work. He he grew bigger? That's, 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 I'm the what bard here. You asked me the question. I don't know what you want. There will be a clatter on the counter. And you will see that um, a large roast has been pulled out and is beginning to be sectioned. There was a good hunt today. So uh, I was able to pick this up. I was going to turn it into a stew, but if you're fighting dragons, Toplin will say, I think, uh, well, I think a little bit of venison goes a long way. Looks at it warily for a moment. <laughs> well, it's not green eggs and ham, but um, it looks good. Do you want to make me a perception roll? <laughs> yes, please. Uh, that's a four. Four? I don't know, man. Like, it's kind of glisteny in the light. Uh, please, let everyone else have their first choices. I I was not actually part of the dragon slaying, so clearly my pit, my friend should have it first. And she's just going to watch them. Sindri has forgotten about that until he takes his first bite. And the smell of it. <laughs> Honestly, the taste probably assuages any doubt you might have had. This is really good. <laughs> and Thea, you should you, you need to try this. <laughs> oh, thank you. She'll probably just like off of your fork. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> mm, right. It's really good. Yeah, it's really good. 
So, Trilena, his wife, is going to come out and serve you as well. Um, there'll be plenty of food and drink to go around. Aside from the sliced venison, you also will see that there is, um, for one, the venison is, is fairly well spiced for a small community like this. And you'll remember as you're eating this, that some of the spices that are on this venison are ones that you brought in when you first Yay! arrived at Phandalin. And, um... Beyond that, there will be a bit of a of a mushroom fettuccine that is served up on the side too, with a nice cream sauce clinging to freshly made broad noodles, cracked pepper, a little bit of um, a little bit of salt on top, and uh, as well um, to go onto the side, each of you is going to be given out three butter fried snails fresh from the gardens oh Carmilla will eat all of that <laughs> this is fancy people food Sindri is absolutely digging in Alessandra is just casually eating like this is normal <laughs> yeah. snails aren't fancy people food if you live in the if you live out here and the same with truffles and there are truffles in the fettuccine that were easy to find in the local forest Sindri is, like, again, kind of left speechless by his change in circumstance. Just... Is it all good? Really, it's very, very good. I'm very grateful. Thank you. This is a wonderful treat. Hey, it's and part of your stay. I, uh, I can't mm. afford to give you the rooms for free, but oh, that's fine. I figured with what you've done for the red... Well, dealing with the red brands, I could... I could dip a little bit into the spice cupboard. Thank <laughs> you. I've I've never eaten like this. Even on my best really? days. Yeah. Oh. A lot of fish. Now fish. That's a pain to get out here. Unless you're talking about like river river trout and well, river trout's pretty nice, but you know. Got a lot of catfish around here from the lakes. Not my favorite. Well, next cart that goes out, maybe we can order in some salted fish. Bring the Oh, that would be fantastic. I haven't had fish in, like, like sea fish. Yeah. Oh, in years. If you could bring any eels. Ooh, yeah. My wife makes an amazing eel pie, but they're hard to get out here. Okay, well, um, I'll talk to the coaster when we're, once we got Gundren back. Good luck so, with that. Yeah. We're just waiting for some armor to get made, and we're on the road. So we'll be back. I'm sure you'll be fine. You guys are tough. We killed a dragon. <laughs> Lady Alessandra, sitting as you are in the corner, you see Carmilla kind of perched next to Lyric, eating very well. Um, Carmilla, are you casting any backward glances, or are you doing that rigid back thing when you're not looking at someone? <laughs> Yeah, bro. I think I think she's probably looking at Anthea to see if Anthea is still with Sindri, and she is, and she's getting like just a little bit like she didn't say when she was gonna do it. She didn't, it's not necessarily gonna be today. It's totally fine. We're not leaving till tomorrow afternoon, and just like on that like thing over her brain, but definitely not looking at the corner. <laughs> so, Lady Alessandra, what are you doing? Um, so she's I definitely think... not looking in your direction. She seems like she's deliberately ignoring me. You can make me an so, insight roll. Sure. One, one, one. <laughs> <laughs> no such luck, Krista. Damn. <laughs> uh, insight. It's so much funnier if you're just angry that I'm ignoring you. <laughs> 22. 22. You know what it's like to be ignored. You flash back to times in school where you found yourself at the end of the wrong scholarly clique getting the cold shoulder from one of the Ravenholm girls we hate the Ravenholms they suck they do at least that's the rumor that went around this is true um... no shame but 
you know, teachers are off limits. Gross. I know. Um, I think Alessandra's gonna wait till like we're finished eating, and if we kind of get up to reorganize so Sindri can tell a story again, she is going to try and hit then. <laughs> Basically, to, just to strike. Yes, exactly. She's going. Her, she's going to take her opportunity then, when everything's in a bit of chaos, as everybody's moving around, to loop her arm through Carmilla, steer her out the door. <laughs> oh goodness, what is this? I so. I understand if you don't like me, um, but we need to at least get through dealing with Gundren. Do you take her outside? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. The moon is high overhead as you step what outside. Several people pass inside <laughs> of the tavern to have a meal. <laughs> we, we don't need to be friends. Just fear. <laughs> uh, Alessandra's going to start like tearing up a little bit. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, Lady Berquil. Um, okay. This, <clears throat> I do not dislike you. But you avoid me all the time. I don't know how much came out when I was ill in the what? tree. I know that your oh, family... Well, your family is, is a, a hunter of evil things. Well, yes. They're paladins. Uh, precisely. My family are not fans of paladins. And paladins are seldom fans of my family. And I would not want to put you in a position where you had to travel with someone that you were uncomfortable traveling with. And I feel I have kept much Are of my... Evil? If so, how did you fool my divine sense? I, I like to... She's very well, confused. <laughs> <laughs> I would never presume to be stronger than the divine, so clearly... Well, that is somewhat comforting in a strange way. Um, I suppose I am not evil if the divine well, has I mean, said I'm not. I'm concerned as well about rescuing Gundren, which doesn't really seem evil. I mean, there's not much well, just... technical value to rescuing him for your you if you didn't care. I suppose I could have some deep dark seat or why I needed perhaps he owes me money, but he doesn't. But anyway... I'm terribly sorry. The, my point being is that they're... I mean, you, you could always repent if that's what it is. Oh, that's... It's what I'm trying to... It's why I'm traveling with Andia. There is a piece of me that was put there, not by my choice, but it is in my blood, both f figuratively oh, and literally. Thing? Oh, well, that's okay. You're not evil. You could be an undead and not evil. My family's more concerned about extra planar things anyways. It's okay. called Over the Watchers. So they're all concerned about guarding the gateway between planes. Also, you're not evil, so. The druid said you had a little undead in you. That's why the stuff affected you. Little. Right. Well. Is that uh, what you were? If... That's what you were worried about. Oh. She's just going to pull you in and hug you and pat you. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> stock still for a minute just absolutely terrified and then just like puts like one hand up to pat your back <laughs> she's still not used to hugs <laughs> it's 
it's okay. Thank you. So when you say it was put in you, do you mean just like bloodline wise or did somebody do something to you? Well, a little bit of both, I suppose. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it's a family line and I was the one that was supposed to bring it to fruition, but I do not I like the sound. Feels. Yes, right? It's family is the worst. They do kind of suck. Yes, <laughs> in my case, quite literally sometimes. <laughs> oh, is that the type of undead? It's like, uh huh. Oh. I, I file these. I, isn't that usually, hurt? yes, but it. The complexion is already bad enough. I don't want to scare anybody. So, do they grow back? Slowly, but She's they making do. making very like odd hair. hair gestures as she talks Just... to. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you have to kiss yes. violent like them? Yes, there's like horns. There are some tieflings that, I mean, not Lyric. She lives in it proudly, which is um, wonderful. But, but there are many tieflings. At a certain point, do you have to keep like filing them or they would grow into your mouth? Oh, no. That's It's not like rams that have horns that grow into their eyeballs. Okay. No, it's not like that. They, there is a point at which they stop, but they tr they keep trying to get there. All right, so it's more of a magic have... thing. Yes, I think so. <laughs> I would assume it's some kind of magic. Oh, yes. all right then. You can stop avoiding me. And she'll walk back into the inn with you, just kind of guiding you back in. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> and it was as big as a tower. It Whoa. had fangs the size of horses. Horses! <laughs> Whoa! Did we People fight? Are... Oh, you weren't there. I don't yeah. think we fought that. <sighs> it's roar shattered oh, the trees oh, around it. A roar! Oh, and Lady Alessandra descended from the top of the tower, sword in hand, like an avenging solar, cleaving the beast in twain. What was that? An avenging what? <laughs> Did you call me such an insult? In twain, even! Oh, it's the solar. They are divine beings. Sindri is, like, carefully standing on a table, not kicking over any of the food. <laughs> 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 He's also not drunk. He's just <laughs> making a performance boy. roll with, with, with advantage. <laughs> yes. Because now you're doing it for an audience. It's performance. So it's a 15. 15? Yeah. You know what? People are pretty lubricated here with beer and food. <laughs> and uh, they are going to have a fantastic time uh, and are going to buy you all at least two rounds of drinks. Wow. Perfect. Um, Sidri will uh, take Torben aside and just ask him to water his down a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, no worries. I got you. I'd love, I'd love to have fun, but I do have... You got work in the morning. I do. Is uh, Sildar here? What if he tries to buy you something? <laughs> and behind you, the door is going to open and... Sildar Hallwinter will enter, dressed in more casual clothing, his armor not on. He's shaved, finally, taking some of that stubble off of his cheeks, which makes him look significantly younger. Still easily into his 40s, but he looks around, sees you, and smiles. Sildar, hello! Uh, I guess, here, I'll, I'll start this off. I'll grab him one. <laughs> What are we drinking? Um, what whatever ale is on the on the house? I've got whatever's nice red ale. Perfect. It'll do well Thank for you. you. And he'll slide one across the counter. And things in town are well. They are. I um, I led a couple of the uh, the militia into Tresendor Manor after you all headed off. Managed to spook out the rest of the red brands that were there. Just two or three of them. No word Good. about Yarno yet, though. And we did we do you steer clear of the basement? That beast in the in the caverns there? The the thing with the Yeah. Yeah, no, I stayed pretty well away from it. It seemed to not want anything to do with any of us. Good. Well, that thing creeps me out. 
If it's not causing him any harm, I suppose there's no no issue with it being there. So what's this I hear about uh, a dragon? Uh, yeah, so um, the lot of us uh, slayed Venomfang, the <laughs> great green dragon of Thunder Tree. Uh, for, and I'm not lying about it. It happened. We did it. Um, you we killed lived. a dragon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we killed a dragon. What do you know? Do you have any souvenirs? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Anthea did most of the work. Um, I taking dragon care. Dragon parts. Yes. Uh, dragon, dragon parts. And uh -huh. we have have some teeth. And when you see Lady Alessandra's armor tomorrow, it will blow your mind. Huh. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't had a, my mind hasn't been blown in a long time. Well. Maybe we can do something about that. Sindri will the turn around. Track. The voice <laughs> Yeah, Sindri will turn around. Uh, <laughs> grab his beer. Uh, cheers. Yeah. Cheers to you, Dragon Slayer. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, uh... That did happen, huh? Yeah. Whew, it's so warm in here. The... Yeah, it is a little warm. So what's the plan? We're off to... Uh, sorry. Uh, when Lady Alessandra's uh, armor's done, we're heading out for at, uh, probably about noon to go rescue Gundren from... Uh... You're pretty flushed. Yes, it's warm in here. I've been... Uh, how many of these drinks have you had? Uh, one and a half. Are you really that much of a lightweight? No. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> well, then I better catch up. <sighs> uh, yeah, so, um... Yeah, so we're heading off to... So. To, uh... We're heading off to Craigma Castle tomorrow. Um... I'm... I'm really looking forward to having longer to catch up once we're back with Gundren. Catching up with Gundren? No. Oh. Yeah. I want to thank you. He puts a hand on your shoulder. The thumb kind of lingering at the side of your deltoid, right at the crease. Somebody with some martial knowledge needs to stay here in town in case the Red Brands come back. Of course. I'd go with you. But I know that you're... S well, <laughs> you killed a dragon, Sindri. You're a mite tougher than me. You're the one that needs to go rescue Gundren, not me. This town needs your protection. These have, your, these have been your people. I consider you one of my people. So you make and sure you come back in one piece, okay? I will. I know you're a busy guy, but, um, you ever want to tell me this dragon story, I'd love to hear it one-on-one -on -one sometime. I'll tell it to you as soon as I get back. I look forward to that. Maybe we Sindri can... will... Okay. <laughs> maybe we can... Sp I have a bottle of wine in my room. We could maybe split to cheers your victory. Perfect. Cinder will slam his drink and then, well, 
I, I must be up early. We have preparations to do. Uh, and we'll clap him on the shoulder and then, like, <laughs> fucking beat feet. Why are we all so awkward? <laughs> and surprisingly, Sindri's a lot more awkward than I am, so I'm enjoying playing this up. This is very, very fun. And also... Ah, shove so, my entire poncho in my shirt as my as Sindri beats feet away um, you are not going to be present uh, and none of you are for the telling of this um, when Trelina the uh, proprietress of the establishment leans over the bar at Sildar and goes you know he fancies you right I know you're just going to let him squirm like that Mm hmm. He says and takes a long pull of his ale. Some things are worth waiting for. Hmm. Everybody's getting romanced but me, she says and walks off right as, um,. Uh, anyone who's downstairs is going to see Toblin come out uh, bearing dessert for anybody who wants it there. A nice little celebratory um, uh, celebratory um, set of white no wine celebratory. donuts. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, no, you're all celebratory. Cele celebratory. <laughs> uh, some, some, white wine, some white wine glazed donuts. Wow. Fresh fried with a little bit of lemon zest. Ooh. Uh, Carmilla's going to sort of try to lean over to Anthea, having come back in with uh, Alessandra. Um, and like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't really, fr I kind of forgot. Um, no, it's, 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 it's totally okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. It's, everything is fine. Apparently she is well aware and oh. all is well. Oh, okay. Yes. But oh, thank good. you for being willing. Oh, yeah, and, no, of course. And you did such a good job telling the story that it, it was worth it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we did our best. I think you missed all of the parts with the actual effects, though. I saw the flashes in the window. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, good, good. <laughs> uh, these donuts look amazing. And, and I will have one. They are very ah, good. Ah, oh very my good. You God. almost want to have two. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Is anyone doing anything else with the rest of the night? I mean, Sindri will be in his bunk. <laughs> Sindri is looking at the ceiling. I wish you weren't so fucking awkward, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a poster of David Hasselhoff pinned to the roof, being like, <laughs> "Yeah, like, what am I doing here?" <laughs> Have a real, real heart to heart with self. Uh, I think Carmilla will be a little bit more like lax and actually kind of like chatting with people in the bar and like being a little bit more like she's kind of starting to realize that maybe just because she's got this aspect, it doesn't define who she is and all of these people in her life seem to be still supporting her regardless uh because she was hiding it so very well uh <laughs> and, and so uh yeah i think she's she's actually kind of starting to light, lighten up a little bit and and maybe have nice. a drink or two and how enjoy some donuts so as as you're all sitting at the bar the three of you uh one last person is going to enter the bar and that is going to be um i missed said his name is elgin earlier i don't know why i did that uh but darren uh, Duran, uh, Eldermath, Edermath, pardon me, Edermath, the drow adventurer. He slides oh. into the table. Hello. Oh. Hello there. Um, a cider, please. <laughs> See, That's a good this, one. Well, the ciders come from my orchard, of course they are. Oh. You look like you're celebrating. Uh-huh. We slayed a dragon. A and... dragon? Uh-huh. What? And we made it to Thunder Tree. Yeah, that's where we slayed the dragon, actually. And... 
Did you happen we to have make a... it? Hmm? Did you happen to make we it? We have over a my guide own? on Gundren. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Hmm. Were you over by Old Oak Well? Um, Old Owl Old Well. Old Owl Well? Mm-hmm. What did you find? A necromancer who's There's doing his these... thesis. Mm-hmm. Huh. Did we find things? Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all you found. Okay. Uh, he was clearing out, though. So there was nothing of the old magic there that he found? No. And it seemed he just kind of took the zombies under his control, I think, and didn't Zom actually make them. Zombies. Yes, they may You said necromancer, that makes sense, I suppose. Um. Yeah, they were dead and then alive. So they were alive again? Or undead. No, they were undead. Undead. Uh, alive. Ah, so unalive. Yes. Un no, un unalive so did means you... completely dead. They were undead. I thought unalive was a euphemism to keep... Um, well, to make sure you don't get censored by the press. I don't know. They were they were alive, and then they were unalive, and then they were undead. Ooh. In technical terms, I believe. I have some expertise in this. I think that works. <laughs> you think that's right? And Alessandra will just kind of abruptly add herself to the conversation. <laughs> uh, now we're all at a table. My lady? Did you... have you made good huh? use of the boots? The boots I gave you. I think she forgot she had them up. The boots of striding We have springing. been riding a lot. Yes, we've been had... riding a lot, so... Yeah. I actually don't have them on my sheet, so I totally forgot. Oh, you should probably should add those, they're really good. Yeah. Oh, when I'm... Anyway, um, well, congratulations. I appreciate you going and looking into things. This town isn't much, but I do have a soft spot for its people. It seems really nice here, actually. Right, it's cozy. Mm. Much nicer than the Underdark. Well, I would assume so. Uh, how Seems is Droop? Cold. I'm sorry? Oh, yeah. How is Droop? The goblin. Ah, oh, um, I've got him working in Apple Press. He seems pretty interested in the mechanisms. Oh, yeah, he He's would just... be. <laughs> Honestly, funny. it's... I've adventured for quite some time before my retirement, and still, to this day, I'm not exactly sure what to do. Because I'm... <laughs> Can you imagine? Technically, taking care of Droop means that I'm his manager. Can you imagine a male drow in charge of someone else? What a strange well, sentiment. Well, from what we've seen, you are a natural. You took him <laughs> under your wing quite... You're very paternal. That's a thing up here, isn't it? Hmm. Well, I, not from my experience, but I hear it is. Yeah, perhaps we had similar upbringings. Powerful women dark, in the family. Dark, dank, uncomfortable. Hmm. People above you telling you what to do all the time. Hmm. Sounds like you were raised in the Underdark as well. It certainly felt it. Again, I should probably go and make sure that he hasn't, um... He was talking about reconfigurating the PSI of the press, and I'm not certain what several of those words mean, but I wanted to check in when I'd heard you were back here. Toblin, a round of ciders for the table, please. And, um... Send a, a small cask up for the ones who aren't here. They're not dead, are they? I know. Uh, Lyric is actually right there. Sleeping? As you turn and look, Lyric's chair is empty. 
<clears throat> oh. oh. I suppose sleeping. Hmm. But not dead. Or unalive. No. No. Or undead. <laughs> Just one of us. Hmm. <laughs> he knocks the table <laughs> twice with his off hand. And... Good luck. And come by if you ever want some apples. Do make an excellent cobbler. Mm. Good luck to you with your goblin who's changing the PSI on that. Just make sure he just hasn't loosened anything. Be careful when you operate the machine next. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> yeah. He says and departs from the hey. inn. <laughs> A round of ciders approaches the table. Carried Ooh. by um carried by Pip. He sets them down, yawns largely into his hand. Mm. And what do you do with the rest of your night? I think Carmilla will pull out a, a, a small travel-sized dragon chess board um, and ask Anthea if she wants to play, because I'm sure they've played many times uh, on their travels. <laughs> sure. That sounds fun. Uh, Lady Alessandra, do you know how to play dragon chess? I don't know. Do I? <laughs> uh, are you proficient in it? I'm not proficient in anything. I, I in chose it. I chose it as my noble background uh, thing to be proficient in. I chose mm -hmm. dragon chess. That's right. You get yes. uh, you get dragon chess, a deck of cards, something like that. Um. Oh, sure. I forgot about that. I didn't actually add it to my sheet. So it's sure. okay. I can teach you right now. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So uh, um, let's go ahead on. and Carmilla. Well, all right. How about uh, we will play as a, as a team uh, against Anthea. She's very good. Um, <laughs> and uh, we can learn as we go. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Carmilla, awesome. roll with advantage. Yes. Anthea, roll flat. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is what is that? Oh, it's a ten. <laughs> uh, and this is Whoa. intelligence, right? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, it'll be a thirteen. Just flat. Yeah. Seven. Seven. <laughs> it's okay. I got yeah. a thirteen with advantage. So. <laughs> All right. I so you will eventually be able to uh, to kind of counter move and counter move, and and Thea will kind of kind of sleepily be blocking. I'm thinking she's a little distracted from earlier in the day. A little tipsy, maybe. Mm. Halfling constitution. Ha make me a halfling constitution check. <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything. What'd you get? Well, you... Oh, um, 16 on the dice. So plus constitution would be 18. 18? Is it a constitution no, save? Constitution save, yeah. Dirty 20, then. <laughs> Dirty 20. I'm proficient in it. So, as you are playing, you're a little... You're enjoying your drink, and you're you're doing this more socially than not. Mm -hmm. And every time you come up with a, with a really good strategy, they manage to titter back and forth. And... They're... You're, you can't help but notice, as they're playing together how close they begin to sit. Mm. Their chairs eventually touching, their knees bumping into each other. And it seems that you're not sure how aware of their proximity they are to each other. As focused as they are trying to beat you. It's a little distracting. <laughs> no, two on one. Yeah, well... Hmm. Best two out of three. And so on. And so forth. <laughs> and as you start to as you start resetting the, the game for another match, you're going to hear a soft clearing over your throat. Hmm? Or probably a soft clearing of a throat over your shoulder, I should say. Um <laughs> and a a very plainly dressed, um a very plainly dressed halfling is standing behind you. He has some um, slightly um, lilac-hued black hair, 
that kind of like under highlights of purple, um, kind of pulled back into a, a soft ponytail at the nape of his neck, uh, and is dressed in just pretty decent clothing, we'll say. Not particularly nice, but good casual wear, um, with a button-up vest of, of kind of like a, a nice, like, kind of straw yellow. And, sorry, I couldn't help but notice you over here. Um, looks like the fiddler's looking to play a jig. There's nobody else here that's my height. Do you dance? I mean, not particularly, but um, if there's no one else to dance with you, I suppose I could. Do you two want to play? You're good enough now, Lady Alessandra. You can play Carmilla. I can try. Oh, you'll do very well. She looks a little nervous, but all right. <laughs> And he'll smile and give you a deep bow at the oh. waist. Oh, Marcus Windwillow. Um, uh, mm, um, Anthea Briarfoot, it's, um, it's nice to meet you. She'll very awkwardly curtsy. Pleasure to meet you as well. Um, shall we? Hmm, yes, um, let's. All right, he'll take you over to dance. Uh, and um, as he kind of like takes you by one hand, uh, he will... <coughs> sorry... Uh, for the calluses. His hands are fairly rough. Oh, um, no worries. Sorry for mine. Hers will also be pretty rough as she tinkers lots. <laughs> oh, wow, those are a lot of burn uh, marks. Yeah, I, um... Do you do glass blowing too? My hands. No, but that's super cool. You should talk to me. You should talk, tell me about it. Tell me I'm, all about it. I would love to talk to you all about it. Yeah. And then some music will begin playing. Can you make me a, uh, a performance roll to dance? Oh, God. Or you can just make... So it's dex and performance, please. You can just roll dex if you don't have... Oh, he's not bad, actually. That's going to be... Oh. That's going to be a 16. I rolled a 15. Plus dex oh. would be 17. Okay, so you are easily able to keep up with him uh, as he dances with you through kind of like a nice... A nice vibrant jig. It's mm -hmm. a nice fun time. Lots of swirling, lots of spinning, lots of stomping in the mm. traditional halfling style. I don't have any music for this, unfortunately, but you guys know exactly. Like da, 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 dun, da, 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 Anything from like Hobbiton, right? Any of those type of stomping songs. And at the end of the song, there's much giggling, much applauding from the assembled folk. Yahoo! Can I buy you that a drink? so fun. Oh, sure. Thank you. I thought you. you said you weren't a dancer. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I pick it up pretty quickly. I'm a fast learner. I bet. <laughs> so, you you said that you um you don't do what 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 do you work with your hands in? Carpentry. Oh, so I do. Uh, well, I mean, I tinker with a lot of things. So usually a little <laughs> yeah. mechanical devices, or like clocks? mostly I just make potions. I mean, I could tinker with a clock, but usually you... no, I make little devices. Oh, so you do herbalism. <laughs> Are you a mostly, nurse? Yes. Uh, no, no. I um. It's usually used more um, offensively. Like um. I made these things, and she'll oh. show one of her little fire bolts. <laughs> I said it. What does it do? Hmm. Well, so I won't do it in here. But you throw it, and then this glass vial will break, and then it'll be like a little poof, plume of fire. I'm an adventurer. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. Heart eyes. You're <laughs> really neat. I think you're neat too. Glass blowing um, is so cool. I also do some of the carpentry around here, particularly anything wow. that's that's too small for um, any of the big folk to fit inside of. To fit inside of? Mm-hmm. Any of the rafters, beams, any carpentry, oh, uh, cabinets, oh, and things I like see. that? I thought you were making things for people to fit inside of, and I got very confused. I mean, I could. Okay. Like that old story with the, um, uh, with, with the, uh, the wooden ox. What's that? The dwarves who built the wooden ox to sneak into 
Oh, it's a great story. Um, I'm trying to remember how it goes. Um, I'll, I'll tell you about it. Um, can I buy you a... Yeah. Uh, w what are you drinking? Um, cider most recently. <clears throat> mm, that's good. Um... So yeah, it's the old story that um, there mm -hmm. were these these dwarves that had had um, their um, these dwarves were pursuing a princess that had been stolen away by an ogre who was going to uh, roast her over sp ogre stuff. Um, oh yeah, but, very classic ogre stuff. Mm -hmm, but they knew that yeah. the ogre was also very fond of of ox meat, so they oh. constructed a um, a wooden ox and hid themselves inside of it so that they would take. Um, so Ooh. that he would take it into his pen with the rest of the ox, and then uh, in the middle of the night, while um, the ogre was sleeping, they snuck out of the ox and, and <gasps> uh, killed him and rescued the princess, and, and then wow. took all of his ox. Yeah, 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 I'm not telling it that well. I'm not much of a storyteller. No, I think that was great. I got the gist of it. And there was suspense and victory. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Um... Have you considered huh? for for your your vials? Mhm. Mm well, you might be able to get a little bit more range if um and he'll just start diagramming on the counter with beer foam. <laughs> Something more aerodynamic. Basically, and we'll start working <laughs> on ideas with you and just kind of doing some shop talk. Oh. Ooh, that's so interesting. So if we do the glass this way, it would break easier? Well, I think so. And if you were looking for something larger, um, hmm. maybe something like a volumetric flask um, mm -hmm, with a stopper mm -hmm. cork in there, you could easily use that with a slingshot to get some range mm. on it. Basically, fireball. <laughs> Actually... Full disclosure, I don't think Anthea ever gets fireball. It's what not an hell? artificer spell. I think it's only artillerist artificer. So That's bullshit. <laughs> I know. But You you know what? If if you figure it out from this, Marcus Windwillow <laughs> will help you get fireball on your spell sheet. That would be amazing. <laughs> Alright. The rest of the night is fun and relaxing. And all of you are perfectly awkward. <laughs> you sleep, you rest, and you prepare for the day to come. Gathering up all of your belongings. Preparing everything that you need for the adventure ahead. At early morning, you have breakfast, greet each other, and head out. The blacksmith shop awaits you. As you head out, the sound of the, well, the sound of a little bit of hammering is still audible. In fact, it's one of the only things that you can hear at eighth bell in the morning. A little bit of tink, tink, tink of a peen hammer. And then, quite a loud sigh, and the sound of a body falling heavily into a chair as you approach. Maza, her dark skin completely soaked through, big gray bags under her eyes, looking ten years older than she did when you approached yesterday, is going to see you and take a long pull out of a wineskin. Good morning. Good morning. <sighs> you're a um, bit earlier than I expected, but you're just in time. On that note, I didn't think of it before we started describing, but I think Alessandra would have grabbed a bun or something um, on the way out of the inn. Um, breakfast? Praise to Mora. Yeah. Oh. She'll tear into it. Bits of bean curd that's filled with are just streaming all around her in a fake mustache. I forgot to eat. I forgot to eat dinner. Oh. Well, that's not good. Sometimes when I get focused on something, it kind of blots everything out. I have 100% understand. 
I also understand, but also not good for you. No, no. Oh, it's fine. It keeps my waist trim. That and all the hammering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, there's no way I'm going to find a... Well, not that I'm looking, but... I like to keep my options open, eh? Blacksmith doesn't really attract very many suitors. Don't know why. Uh, I would. Th I, I think you're super cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I think you're right. Well, I think I am super cool. Yeah. That's a good thing, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Although I guess being working the forge like I do, I'd think of myself more hot than not. Mm hmm. I like that too. They're both good. We can do it. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, <laughs> Lady Alessandra, if you wouldn't mind, uh, I managed to finish up. A lot of the hinges were pretty well shot, but I was able to use the plates. Uh, some of them, uh, the dragon scale, I was able to melt down. There's enough raw material inside of there that's actually metal. Some of it I used as full plating. You'll see that along the hips. Mm -hmm. But I think you'll like what I've got for you. Um, it turned out a bit more yellow than I expected, but it's okay. I think it's a good look. I think so too. And with that, she will reach back and pull a large canvas sheet off of a work table revealing the glorious burnished armor that is on your character art so exciting uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, try it on make sure I've smoothed out all the edges and um, as for you blue boy was there another blue I... boy in the no, it's me. What do you want me to do with the green ones? You said something about a uh, scale mail maybe yesterday? Uh, if we had enough for it. Um, I can't wear it. Lady Carmilla? Or no, Lady Car Carmilla. Would you be interested? I don't know. I think it'd be a good... It might be good for you. We have what the are... money for it. What's the what is scale mail? Scale mail is plus you. three, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, scale mail is fourteen plus dex mod max of two with disadvantage on stealth. Yeah, what's okay. your dex mod, Carmilla? Plus two. What are you wearing right now? Great question. Uh, nothing apparently. Um. Ooh. I think your armor class is like 13, oh my. right? It is. It's 13. So it's Holy plus crap. one. So I think it's leather. Oh, yeah. Balls. Well, there's a reason I keep dying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so leather is 11 plus dex mod. So yeah, 15. Yeah, I think it's just, it's either leather or chain, whatever the... Uh, what chain uh, would be well, way chain better? It's 13 plus dex mod max of two. Okay. Chain male is what Alessandra's wearing, which is 16 flat. Yeah, you could honestly... Um, she could work on doing the the scale mail for you if you wanted sure um, or you could and you could borrow lady alessandra's chain mail for a bit ah you're similar uh, enough frames well, that that would fit yeah yes i i i suppose that could be useful um it reminds me a little bit of a great uncle of mine but i think it would it would be very useful, especially in the green. I like green. Uh, you seem more like a yes, red person I'd... to me. I, I've always had an affinity for green and red, though. I think they go well together. They bring a cheer to me. Hmm. <laughs> sure. Well, I could probably do... Um, if you're not back for a while, it would take me a couple of days to, to get it up and running at the very least, but I could start working on it. Um, take so, your time. So, Scale mail, Fabio, anything why else? Why don't you take my chain mail? Oh, good. Oh, thank you. Um, I actually do have a request. If I could make get you to make me a pair of uh, uh, cestus, like the ones with like the the moons on them, not the big ones, just 
basically brass knuckles, but at a dragon scale. You want you want like just regular knuckles, or do you want spikes? Yeah, I want. No, no spikes. Just just gauntlets, really. Do you have dragon teeth? I can put I dragon don't. teeth on the end of them so they bite when you punch. Ooh. I actually had an idea for the dragon teeth I left. Oh. I was wondering if uh, I could get a pair of matching daggers made. I could probably do that. Um, hmm. So, so, punching gloves plus. Hi, okay. I could probably do that. Yes. Uh, let's, um, let's say, uh, with craftsmanship time and. Of course. Mm, let's see. Uh, the scale mail. Let's say you've got the materials there still. It's going to be exotic materials to work with. Uh, it's 50. Uh, this has to probably another 20. Um, because I'm not used to doing them. It'll take me a bit more time. Uh, is it just, and then the two daggers, uh, I could do it all for about 70, 70 gold? Eight, 75? 75 with the daggers? Of course. Yes, that's happy to, happy to contribute. Good. Um, and if I've got anything else left over, is there anything else you want? I'm quite happy with that. Yes, I don't know if Lyric would want anything, but Anthea, anything? Oh no, I think I'm okay. There's not much please. here that I would find useful. <laughs> uh, please, perhaps make yourself something. Hmm. Oh, don't give me ideas. <laughs> I'd love to see what you could make up of. I'm looking forward to it too. Alright, put your gold on the table and uh Good we, luck. We broke to a hundred and ten gold each, correct? Yeah. Um Or is that a hundred and ten total? That's with the last chunk of stuff. But like from the earlier, so in November 6th... We have tons from before. Yeah, so th I'm not counting any of that in the final total. This is just from the, what we sold. Today. Minus uh, what Alessandra took out. To yeah, so there's 110 total. each. So that changes that to... God, that's so much gold. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I I'm... spent some of that on the 500. And then what remained split between all of us is 110 each. Okay. So I'll I'll pay for the the one I'll pay for the seventy five out of mine because that okay. still leaves me with uh, thirty five gold, which is more gold than Sindri has had in his entire life. Okay, mm. why do I have twenty platinum pieces and ninety four <laughs> um, gold pieces? Because we did get platinum at one point, I think, or electrum. We also got electrum. So okay, I have on my sheet fifteen copper, forty-seven silver, four elect four electrum, ninety-four gold, and twenty platinum. I don't know where the platinum came from, but I have the same <laughs> for copper, silver, and electrum because that's how we split it. Yeah, I don't remember what platinum, but you may have picked up some by itself. Totally, and just put it on your sheet. Um, right. I would also like to have Sindri have given like five gold to, um. Uh, Tarbin, or Torben. Torben's kid? Or Torben? Torben. Yeah. Uh, as we left to play for a feast. When you get back? Uh, yeah. Right. Well, no, for the feast we had last night. Oh, okay. Because I understand he he went and did that all of the kindness of his heart, but I do want to also like not leave him broke after we leave. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. And I am just going to make a roll to see how well she fixed up your armor, Christine. Okay. Okay. Uh, your armor is plate mail, and it is particularly nice plate mail. Ooh! Exciting. Basically, it just looks really cool and uh, is very impressive. She did not roll well enough to do something super special with it. Nuts. Sorry. Maybe Can I give future. you my inspiration? Upgrades! <laughs> I upgrades! <laughs> I do not you, know if I have any. You might have Anthea have to coat it with something. Ooh. Ooh. 
Ooh, upgrades, upgrades. Upgrades. And we'll see what she comes up with in the future. Mm -hmm. So now, Exciting. decked out in your armor, your horses still rented and ready to go. So, Lyric says, are we actually going to go or what? <laughs> yes, let's go. Of course. And with that, you mm -hmm. hop on your horses and proceed north, finally, toward Kragma Castle. Which is where we're going to pick up next episode, folks. Uh, thank you so much for tuning <laughs> into this episode. Uh, players, thank you for being here. You're all lovely. Thank you for the awkwardness. <laughs> so good. I love so that good. this game has become like the awkward romance game. <laughs> <laughs> right? It makes me so like the future horrors all the funnier. Ah, uh, future horrors. Um, all right, folks. Hey, thank you for tuning in. A big thank you to our sponsor tonight, Bookworm Games. Uh, and of course our patrons over at patreon.com slash dorktales. Uh, if you join the $5 tier, you can watch tomorrow's, uh, sort of epilogue of call of the nether deep in Strixhaven, uh, that is happening. It's going to be absolutely wild. Uh, I hope that you come and enjoy that. There's also tons of games, uh, such as our, uh, alien destroyer of worlds game is going to be dropping this week. Uh, finally, after many delays from my illness, um, as well as there is a new game that we are producing for that on top of old gods of Appalachia. Uh, that is a university based scion game where everybody is, uh, basically it's Greek week at a university. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun. That's coming later this year. Uh, a big thank you to everybody who supports us on Patreon. We could not do this without our patrons. Uh, I want to thank, starting at the top, uh, my mom, who's the reason that I caught this cold, going down to visit her in Kansas. Uh, so hi, mom, my divine producer. Uh, wonderful to have you here. Uh, and uh, my stepdad, Bob, wonderful to have your support. Love you both. Um, to our demonic producer, Precarious, thank you so much. Come and watch him fight aliens over on Destroyer of Worlds. Or check out his own channel where he is doing uh, Mists of Makani every Friday night with uh, several of our Dorktales teammates over there. And uh, coming up soon, he's going to be doing Alien on Sunday afternoons as well. So go enjoy that at twitch.tv slash Precarious. Uh, B-R-E-K-A-R-I-U-S. Uh, a big thank you as well to our wizards of the Patreon. Uh, that would be, uh, Tammy the Forever Cleric, the Ink Goblin, and Sorcerer Sanguine, who has leveled up from the High Council to ascend to his sorcerous nature. Like um, we have two, uh, multi-classes, because we have the Forever Cleric, who's now a wizard yeah. as well, and we have a sorcerer who's also a wizard. Who's a wizard, wizard. as well. And a goblin who's a wizard, which is also great. It's it's so good. It's so good. It's just an ink goblin, too. That's like a bard, right? Um, and then our High Council of the Patreon, uh, of course, is Terran, Dustin, uh, Amberthist, Raven with Bobbles, Karasha Urquhart, Chef Aladeth, Larouk, Mike Baxter, and Kelowna Curd, who I'm very happy to be back for Fandelver because I know Kelowna Curd really likes Fandelver. And um, I want to thank you all for being here uh, and everybody else who's on the Patreon. Big thank yous. Um, if you were listening to this on podcast, I apologize for the delays at the beginning of the year getting the podcast up. I could not record the, the post credit. So I could not release the episode and uh, I have my voice again, mostly. So thank you so much for being here with us. I hope you all had a fun night. I sure did. And it's great to be back. Welcome to 2024. Have a wonderful night. We'll see you next week. And uh, be sure to come back on Wednesday for the Session Zero for Vampire. Yes. Good night, everybody. Bye.